by the Carla B. Hey guys, <laughs> we're back. It's Carla Vasquez here. Episode 5 of Carla V Thinks Out Loud. We're rocking or rolling. We have another guest here in the studio. The lovely, hilariously talented comedian actress Jess Wood. Say what's up. Hello, what's up? Hi, Hi everyone. Up? Hi. Where do I look? Where's my close up? Hello. Oh. Look at all these cameras. I don't know where to look. Yeah. I'm just looking at myself in there at that screen. I'm just doing this. Oh. I know. Say no. huh. <laughs> you guys can't see here. We have a screen behind you that I can see myself in, so I'm just going to play vanity the whole time. Just How's that? How's that? Hello. Look, we came on like festive and happy. Hey. We do have a show after this, guys. I'm going out right out of the gate, plugging at Hollow Spirits. After this is done airing live, Jess and I are going to carpool down to Hollow Spirits and do an 8.30 show. I think it starts at 9, though. I'm not. Correct. It does start at 9 o'clock. Okay. 30 of the doors. Thank you. <laughs> Please come and have a burger and a drink before the show. Do I don't know. That's what the flyer says. Yes, <laughs> so do that. I'm just reading off just a flyer. Do that. We're really good. Hi, Carla. Hi. You pronounce your last name again for me. Vasquez. 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 Okay. Or is, is it really my say it'd be like Vas with a B on it? Vas Va Vasquez. Vasquez. Q-U-E-Z is almost like a kiss sound. Like a Vasquez. K, K sound almost. Vasquez. Vasquez. Carla Andrea Vasquez. Andrea. Andrea. I don't oh. know how to say it. I, a, Andrea, Andrea, Andrea. 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 I mean, it's Andrea. Uh, Is there any moment? homework tonight? It's Andrea. <laughs> I was wondering because I just need to check because yeah. I always am like so bored at home. You never give enough homework. That's Andrea. That is an Andrea. I had a kid in my like AP classes. This was Andrea. It was totally like, oh, God. <laughs> um, do we want to get extra credit this week? Like, yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. Fun times. What is your middle name? I don't have one. I was going to ask, Fucking did your hippie hippies. parents give you a middle name or no, not? No, no. They said no. They said, my mom said, you know, we were thinking like, we're, everything's so controlling, you know, you can, how about you could, you can take a, can charge your own middle name. I'm like, I'm five. Why would you give me that responsibility? Oh, so great. It, your but, parents, when you talk about it, remind me of uh, like running with scissors, Augustine oh, yeah, Burroughs, like yes. the mom and that. My therapist told me never read that book. And I went out and bought it. Oh, my gosh. So I was dead on. Yes. Dead on. Okay. That or White Oleander. Oh, oh man. man. I mean, my mom wasn't in jail. She should have been, but she wasn't. So it's a weird thing. Kind of meta. Oh, yeah. Because you grew up where? Okay. So you have been back and forth between New York, L.A. Yeah. I, I was born in Hollywood, California. At a, yes. I was born and raised born in Hollywood. Born into it. Hollywood. <laughs> yes. Uh, welfare. Is that what you mean? Yes. Because yeah. it was completely, <laughs> yeah, I was go. born into welfare. No, that's <laughs> entertainment. That's performing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I guess, home. you know, we're all aware of it. Yeah. Artists are just like, check to check. Sometimes from the government. Mm -hmm. Hey. BBT, what's up? Damn. Swipe it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, I like to say I was born to hippies and raised by gangs because it's Ooh. that was really the truth a uh, nice combination <laughs> yeah well it gave me a balance mm -hmm. and i think that with the hippies um you don't get as much knowledge of the streets uh That's as true. you do with the gangs so true. with Street the hippies smart. yeah mm -hmm. i was uh, i was raised a vegan uh on welfare Ooh. I know. Anti-vax so parents? I mean, thing. I don't know. They were into health. <laughs> and yes. I think that was an excuse. I, as I get older, I'm like, wait a second. I think the whole hippie, vegan, we're into health thing, they're just lazy. They didn't want to shower. Oh, that's they didn't so want to dress me with any clothes. I had no underpants until yeah. I was 10 years old, and that was Aww. from a godparent. Oh, don't owe me. We're not therapy. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm all right. I just love you talk about things. <laughs> it's like, I feel like if I laugh, I'm like, do if I laugh, am I an asshole? No, like, never. Uh, okay. Laugh to keep laughing. Keep from crying, please. Yeah, that's not, yeah. yeah. That's not. This is my survival mode, you know. Uh, Makes sense. Comedy. You became a comedian, yes, mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. sure. So raised by the gangs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Seventh what, grade. What parts of like LA were you like? At? Were you still in Hollywood at that time? Or well, uh, because my folks were never married. Um, my mom lived in Topanga Canyon, which is like the notorious ah. hippie. Everyone's naked. Topanga Canyon. Yeah, Topanga. Yes. Hey, uh, <laughs> you guys down to <laughs> DTF or what? It's very Topanga. <laughs> down to uh, DTF. We have a creek. You guys down with that? There's a there's a dog here waiting on me. I know it's weird and nasty to say that, but shit, you guys, I'm lonesome. Dogs be whining for Jess. <laughs> <laughs> it would not be any different than the men that I've dated. I had, oh. I had to stop owing. Oh. I had to. Oh. I say all oh, meaning my own oh, things too. I'm dear. like, oh, I feel that. Yeah, oh. right? Yeah. I had, yeah, I had two boyfriends go. for four years, and both of them put together, not one, what? didn't equal one boyfriend. It really was they a just sad, wore you out sad more. few years. Two is like, yeah. where's you? I can barely keep track of, like, barely talking to one person. 
Like having more than like two, like I'm like, do your polyamory thing for people who do that. Great. I could probably do that if I had more energy. I don't know. These guys never really talked to me. (laughs) It kind of worked out great. Perfect. They'd just kind of be gone and then Mm -hmm. I'd get with the other one and then he'd be gone and then I'd, Mm -hmm. you know, try to balance it out. I like it. I like like your ways. Teach me your ways. Well, it's called going to therapy for a long time because before that, it wasn't so healthy. Very true. We did talk about like mental health and things on here. Oh my God. We have to say it like that so it's not scary. Why are we flicking our vaginas while we do it? I'm <laughs> it's more like a metal. Machine. Yeah, why do I do that? I um, uh, yeah, I've been called out for like singing weird words before when things get awkward, so we're doing that now. Uh, but yeah, mental health. I had therapy today. Uh, I told you that I was texting. To you. I texted you during it because it was running late, and I was like, rah, 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 and the mechanic's running late. My mom, you're like, don't text during therapy. I'm like, yeah, but she was telling me about a date she had. So That's not therapy. I don't know if really. That's not therapy. I'd like to introduce what therapy is to Carla V. It's a, the therapy out loud right now. It's when a person who's doctoral, they're doctoral, let's just face it, they have some clinical shit going on, maybe a plaque behind them, and then they listen, they listen, and they listen, 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 and they just give you little, little, and then you, and then they listen some more. There's no talking. You don't hear, you don't know what your therapist is, likes for dinner or fucking if their car is broken down or if they have a problem with a man. I don't give a fuck, therapist. She's I'm, like I have a problem. She's your friend? That's no, not she's therapy. like a tia at this point. It's not a, not a, a tia. That's an aunt for English people. Thank you, Medicaid. Yeah. I knew you would know. Okay. I don't know if you guys are watching or listening to audio right now, but Jess is a Caucasian woman. Yeah. Right? I know. As but, much as my mother hates that. But but more, fits in way better with my race than I probably I do even. But I don't Rasa know. loves you. You're I know. Best. I am. A, I have a very lovely... I have a lovely uh, uh, energy you do. with the non-white folk. I don't know why. I think it's because my mom raised me hating white people, which is, oh. you know, self-hate <laughs> is hard. Don't do it, kids. Don't do it. Don't play into that shit. Uh, she was a Jew who got a nose job and changed her name before I was born. So wow. how did I know? I was so fucking groovy. <laughs> I just didn't know anything. All I knew was she liked men and and violence and drugs and i was like well i can't yeah fuck yeah mm-hmm. mom let's do this party on mom oh, yeah. no party underwear in. Yeah. yeah uh do you wear underwear now oh fuck yeah okay. i have like this seven thousand pairs of this one thing and they're it all makes me uncomfortable when people tell me they're not wearing underwear who tells you this my mother was my mother here earlier <laughs> but it's weird don't like, be I'm... uptight carla don't be uptight that's <laughs> what she used I'd to say i'd rather somebody just walk up like completely naked than come and be like i'm not wearing underwear Though, to be fair, I'm not actually wearing technical underwear right now because this is a bodysuit. Um, I know. I just realized I'm going against my own rules. Carla V, this is you talking out loud and us hearing what is really going on in your underpants I'm department. wearing this just to block the cleavage. It's fine. Cleveland, Ohio. I don't know. Left. This bodysuit's barely covering anything, guys. But We're doing vaginally, it. we want to know. The bodysuit vaginally. Is yeah. it buttons? Is it Velcro? What's it's happening? Like buttons. Isn't that unfortunate? It's Let's discuss class- unfortunate it's classic female. buttons. <laughs> it, it makes me feel both sexy and like a baby. Uh, so and like I'm on the edge about it. And like you hurt. It's not. These ones aren't bad. They're plastic. I have had ones that are like Velcro, and I'm like, no, thank you. Buttons. No. See, here's the thing. Don't put a snap next to my vulva. Do you know what I mean? I don't want a snap next to my clitoris. I think that a snap next to anything in my vaginal area. Yes, I said vaginal. I know. It sounds janitorial, but I don't mind. Clean it up, bitch. Get in there. I just feel like it should be soft. It should be fine. Mm-hmm. I've actually cut the crotches out of a lot of these onesie fucking leotard shits that they're all oh, bringing back. Right. And I sew in a very soft cotton cord. Just a soft cotton cord so that my vagina loves me at the end of the day no 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 soft cotton cord i cut i cut i i I, here carla v (laughs) sews out loud i need to know i do so you cut the you cut said buttons don't have a snap near your vagina again or your penis i don't know who's wearing these things stop (laughs) snapping near your penis it's a horrifying thing it's like a little turtle down there so (laughs) that would be worse you're gonna cut (laughs) if <laughs> you've sat in some positions, you're going to cut off those little buttons and then you're going to take, that's just a two frayed, that's just frayed fabric mm-hmm. on either side. Mm-hmm. Then you take those little fabrics and you sew a little soft, sew a little, a little thread, a little soft cord, not a, Oh, just like sew together. Sew together. But then you just get in through the top. 
Get what, in through the top. What happens if it's something that like you have to get in through the bottom? You can't get in through the... Listen. Just don't wear Sew it, it on yourself, Just you don't fucking wear it. <laughs> Just bring some needle and thread to the club. Get into the bathroom and be like, well, I gotta sew this, this, Because you don't want guys to know that you Pull you're, it to the side. Exactly. Can... I love a pull to the side. <laughs> don't get me started. I haven't made out in eight months. God damn it. Where's that dog? Oh, dear. This is embarrassing. Oh, man. Sorry. Yeah. I'm turning you on. <laughs> that, I love it. I'm always turned on. It's. I, I'm sorry. I don't mean to insult you. Oh, no. It's fine. <laughs> I say yes. that to all the guys too. I'm always turned on. It's not you. Yeah, exactly. I'm always. <laughs> Don't get yourself too worked moist. up about your talents. Moist. <laughs> Do you not like that word? A lot of people don't like that it word. It makes me giggle. I, I don't hate it. it. Um, I love it. Uh, sl- love it. Love it. Moist love is okay. It. Um, yes. Other ones like that, like ju- juicy, is kind juicy. of juicy. 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 There was a guy who dated this comic in New York who dated a Puerto Rican girl, and he's like, all I just want to hear her say all night is juicy. Oh, that burger looks so juicy to me. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. But listen, I think it's vaginal. Mm-hmm. Again, vaginal, juicy, moist, mm-hmm. healthy. Hello, healthy. It is healthy. It's a, it's a wet-ass pussy. When the women were going nuts, when the moms were going crazy, and the moms were saying like, well, what am I supposed to tell my daughter about this WAP song? I'm oh, like, right. tell her everything, you this fucking assholes. A, yeah, this what is a good time not? to teach them There's no about sex it. education. There's, There's none. none. And then all uh-huh. of us, and we're like, but here's a naked gay man, and a, a girl making with another girl, and yeah. pussy juice, and macaroni and cheese. I had a friend fucking mm-hmm. ask me, a grown-ass woman, she asked me recently what is this macaroni in a pot i go bitch if i have to tell you i'm gonna apologize first and say i'm so sorry you haven't had a wet ass pussy because that's a wet ass pussy yep i've had a joke about that about the yeah the asmr porn is like yeah mac and cheese or like oatmeal Yes, I know this joke. Oh, Very no. good. She's but a funny comedian, not, this but Carla. But it is that sound. Oh, hang on. See me tonight. Mm. Uh, well, fly baby. in from wherever you are now. <laughs> Hollow spirits. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, those words. It's a good time for them to teach them the sex ed because they're really. I learned. It's a learn, it's a I learned moment. about sex from like my dude friends because I always had like boy like dude friends growing up. Pretty much learned from them. That's a horrible way to learn. Yeah, no, that's like watching your dad's porn. No, that was learn. yeah, that was me like shaving downstairs when I was like fourteen or thirteen before anybody was ever gonna see anything down there. You know, I didn't lose my virginity until like sixteen, maybe seventeen. Hmm. I can't remember now. Hmm. But then I was like, oh, guys, not that kid. I gotta always be ready. And not have any hair anywhere. Shave my fingers, shave my toes, shave my earlobes. Just kidding. I'd, I'd like to earlobes. comment upon this if I may, <laughs> please. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'd like to put my. Uh, first of all, first of all, first of all, those boys are a bunch of bitches because yeah. any real man will fuck any pussy. It's Hello, true. I'm looking at you motherfuckers <laughs> out there. You don't care if it's bush, if it's fucking shaved. And you know what? True. I don't like the shape, but I don't. So let's put the brakes on. You know what I call that shit? The Amber Alert look. Don't yeah, do it. I don't like the full you know anymore. We don't have to uh-uh. do it anymore. Well, and then we don't have to do it. It was mostly like fourteen-year-old boys who had never had sex. That was all like. And they're looking at porn. Shit. Yeah, exactly. And, and that porn. was something that I did. Yeah, and then later mm. I realized. And then I did date a guy not um, too long ago who actually had the opposite fetish. He wanted like full on everywhere, like don't shave anything, like eighties or actually like back in the day on. You're getting the dog turned on. I know. The dog's like, Harry. I was like, I love hair. I'm Harry. The dog's like, I have so much hair. You could fucking lick me all day. You wouldn't even find my skin. It's just oh, hair. I really hope just, uh, yeah. Larry's 10-year-old daughter can't hear us right now. I'm just kidding. I hope she no, can. No, but for us, I yeah, it was, folks... it was pretty empowering, though, to not have to shave anything for like two and a half years. Yes. I was like, this is Exactly. And then I broke up with him and just out of spite so I wouldn't go back. I like shaved it, you know, as like, it was like taking off my dreadlocks when I needed to change. That's about it. (laughs) (laughs) No offense to anybody with dreadlocks. To be fair, he did have dreadlocks too. And he told me when we broke up, he was going to shave his head. And I was like, whatever. Anyway, fun times, guys, with hair up and down and everywhere. We're all very dramatic. That's all I'm saying. We're all very dramatic. Men, women, all of us. It's dogs. It's a whole situation. (laughs) So going back to Topanga Canyon. Yeah, Topanga. (laughs) It's great. Everyone's naked there. (laughs) Yeah. And then you stayed there until how old? Uh, We got flooded. Uh, Oh, wow. Yeah, I lost everything. I was like nine, I think. And then we lived in motel rooms and... Uh, and then we just stayed living in hotel. I think my mom, like, I mean, it wasn't like we got room service. We didn't have any money, but she was like, you know, this whole motel live, this is kind of groovy. And I'm like, yeah, cause they make your bed. You fucking slob. <laughs> that's what's going That's what I really understand. Clean your bathroom. Like I have a, I can actually go to the bathroom with a door. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was what thrilled me. But, um, 
yeah, she uh, she raised me over there, vegan on welfare, just fucking funky, you know. Uh, but uh, but you know, you survive through how you survive. And for me, it was jokes mostly, and mm-hmm. uh, making the adults laugh because they were so high and drunk and fucked right. up all the time that I was like, stay away, ha ha ha, yeah, you know. Because I mean, humor. molestation <laughs> in the let me tell, let me tell that kids. Let's just take a, take a note. Molestation in the 70s and 80s. It was really a different time then. Um, more free love. You know what I mean? Just, just <laughs> you're so uptight is what I'm saying. PSA and people get, really, <laughs> people get really freaked out. They're like, oh my God, how can you say that? And I go, it was a different, and I know a lot of people say this, it was a different time, but it, and it, it was. wasn't okay. <laughs> no, wasn't but okay. it was a different time. But it was yeah. different. You're and not so saying it was right by saying that it was a different time yeah, mm-hmm. at all. Even today I was, or yesterday I was watching your, um, if you want to follow Jess, Jess, Woo. Um, get wood, right? Wait. All of our information is in the description. Yes, it's on the description, Thanks. but you Read do a Tuesday Tuesday um, podcast on, live do. on on Instagram. Where else do you have that on? Oh, but yesterday you were talking about the change of the times, even from like 99 to now. Yes. And like I was thinking, I was like, hey, I remember those times. And it was was totally different. There was still all of that stuff is pre me too is pre all this stuff um pre even like we were talking about like uh school shootings and things it was yeah. like pre do everything be- do you think it's better now or then no uh <laughs> it's still really bad it's still really bad um i think i think the trick that has happened to us i think mm-hmm. there's a tricky little funny thing that's happened in the last 20 years i think that the folks who have this new cancel culture think that they are doing a really great job for the planet and think the world. They think they're saving everyone, Larry. You're, Larry knows. And in, in actuality, they're stopping any kind of conversation yes. that could ever be talked about. Uh, I think it's important to have really intense conversations all the time Mm -hmm. because we live in such a fucking intense world Mm -hmm. and there's always something there's all anybody can always find something the matter right Mm -hmm. but can you always hear what the story is behind that person who's got the crankiness you know online Mm -hmm. we lost man we lost online everything is out of context yeah yeah you can't hear a text you don't talk anymore nobody knows Mm -hmm. how anybody feels and they're just i'm mad and i'm gonna fucking make an exclamation point out of it like i can't it's it's i'm all caps you know i'm pissed like i can't you know i'd much rather i remember when and and larry asked me about patrice o'neill earlier and patrice o'neill was a comic who would maybe punch you in the face like if you said something (laughs) fucked up you couldn't say the fucking n-word you couldn't be a white comic and just go on stage and be like oh n-word this and n-word that are you fucking out of your mind Mm -hmm. first of all it's completely tacky let's just be honest first of all it just think you're being edgy or something Uh, if you want to be edgy tell me some shit that you're embarrassed to talk about yes how about that let me know when the first time you fucking came in your pants was, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let me know the fucking, that you, you whacked it to your stepmom. You know what I mean? Like, I want to know some shit. I tell all y'all stuff. Yeah. It's only fair. Pryor, Patrice, all these guys that fucking told us all their sadness, all their worry, all their trauma, and then found a way to make it light and relatable. When I'm talking shit about the the family people that I have that I finally went and saw and have been 20 years and all this shit. And I'm like, it's awful. And I, the, the stepmom, she yelled at the dog and I was like, no, that's the fucking voice in my head. Oh, like yeah. I, there's some shit that happens to us that we just are still holding on to. Mm-hmm, but I'm, I can go and then talk about it on my show. Yes. And then people go, Oh, your fucking show last week about the families are so relatable. Thank you so much. And all I'm doing is trying to put out what I get in and go, ah, anybody else, mm-hmm, anybody else mm-hmm. feel fucking crazy like this oh for sure yeah and what has happened with cancel culture is it's locked all that down it's locked all that away yeah we can't relate There's anymore no, no. because your relating is offending everybody your your yeah. story is going to be offensive to somebody because it's taken out of context all the time and i think on top of that too is just constant re-education because things are yeah. is changing just like the times are changing new things are happening but um you know re-educating people who maybe didn't know that well or maybe you know need restructuring of how they do things instead of just be like no you don't get to be a person anymore like right like i know we don't I, look, see i'm you. a generation x person so i'm not <laughs> familiar with like 
uh, pronouns, for instance. Like, pronouns is a really new thing for me. But I'm not all, hey, fuck you. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not yeah. like, fuck them and fuck they yeah. and fuck she and he and all. Like, I'm yeah. not like that. I'm like, fuck, all right, this is a new thing. I'm going yeah, like, to see I'll... how I can do, yes. roll with the fucking punch. Because guess what wins? Love. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> always fucking wins. Love yeah. fucking wins. And the reason people ask me when I'm a waitress, my manager used to ask me, how do you know you can go to that table and say such dirty stuff? And I go, I don't know. Until someone says, hey, then I just kind of go for it. Yeah. And it's the same with comedy. People yeah. go, oh, you talk about abortion and no, no, no. I have had abortions. Mm-hmm. I need to talk about it. It's important, especially right now in the world. I love when guys, especially just like if audience people come up and tell you about they like about women and like I've had stuff where I've talked about abortion, which I've had one too as well. And then, well, I don't know if this was the night to talk about this. Like, first of all, I don't know you. You're not a comedian. You don't know what I've been through, assuming like I had never, I have no grounds to speak on it. Even then, I'm still a woman, so you have no grounds to speak on. So many times, I'm sure you've seen this in the scene being unsolicited male advice, especially Mm. yeah, as a female comedian, and Mm. like not even from other male comedians. It's like audience members that are just like never done comedy before, and they're like, "We know how this is done. We've seen one special." I'm like, "No, you don't understand this at all." But yeah, that whole thing of like. What can we say now? What can we say? And I, I like your view on that. Is like love always wins, and as long as you have a good attitude, you can tell that you're a good energy you can person. Say anything. You're good. Yeah, you don't come you from an ill will place. No. At you're all. not. If you, if you're a white comic right now, and you're like, oh, this cancel culture's fucking ruining all my bits. <laughs> then guess what, bro? Your fucking bits sucked. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm so sorry, That's but so I haven't funny. changed a fucking. I, I mean, I don't do the same material that I did in the '90s when I started. But I, I could, you yeah. know what I mean? I fucking could. I'm not scared. I start my set with an abortion joke, and I don't give a fuck. That's how I know if you guys are smart or not. Yes, that's you know who's you know? in with you. What this crowd is like. What yeah. We're gonna, yeah, I'm not trying to be like a bully and come on and be like, "Fuck you guys, you should laugh." I'm being like, "This is important shit." nobody's talking about it. I'm mm-hmm. going to talk about it in a fun ass way. Yes. And we're all going to laugh together. And then maybe you're just going to feel a little bit less uptight about it when you leave this fucking building. And mm-hmm. that's my job, man. Mm-hmm. That's my fucking job. That's, that's what I think. I mean, comics, we're kind of, you're not trying to change yeah. people's minds, man, or make people more relaxed about some shit that they're all, you know, like calm down. And we right now, especially with podcasts and things like we're the ones that are kind of, uh, fighting against that in a sense and not like we are like oh fuck cancel culture or whatever whatever but we're kind of the ones that have to pioneer the like hey let's move through this cancel culture bullshit realize we're also people we can still laugh about things whatever because as far as performers it's like yeah you have musicians that want to speak out whatever but comedians up there are getting on stage speaking their minds every night in a different way that can combat this better i think than like you know a singer saying some tweet about like let's all get along and yeah you know so i think comedians like um We've always had kind of that job of like, what's wrong? What's right? Let's toe the line. Let's make things that are supposedly wrong. Make those funny. And then the other stuff that's supposedly right, let's make that shitty and hilarious. Or like, or you know. just bringing it up. Yes and yes, all of that. But- and also just bringing up the fucking subject in your set mm-hmm. and then tossing it out. Whether people laughed or not, you know they're going to talk yes. about it on the ride home. Yeah. Or they're going to talk about it tomorrow. Or they're going to go, fuck, you know, that lady talked about her. You know, and... I mean, I have a bit right now about the apocalypse because we're all feeling it. We're all mm-hmm. feeling like, what is going to happen to us? What the fuck is going to happen? And I ask people, do you have skills? Do you know how to build? Do you know how to, you know, farm? Have you, can you do anything? And a friend of mine, Charlotte, just asked me recently, like, well, what's your skill? And without missing a beat, I was like, sucking dicks. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hey, that's a skill. I mean, and Charlotte goes, that's not a skill. And then I felt bad for Charlotte. You yeah. Know what I mean? and I was like, mm. she's like, if you had it, you know, it's a <laughs> skill, like, Charlotte. You would make- Sh- you're sucking exactly. I am totally safe. Charlotte, that and, is a skill. You know, it's a skill. <laughs> and uh, and I always money. say, uh, I think there are a few people in the audience tonight that might uh, look at me and think, I would give this lady some fresh water. You know what I mean? So I think just putting a fucking really, like the most scary thing that we can think of right now, but making it something relatable, like, okay, well, what are we going to do? How are we going to work mm-hmm. this out? And then making myself the butt of the joke, which I always do. And I think that's also really important for the cancel call. You be, they can't cancel you if you're the joke yes i mean i'm the fucking joke yeah. every time You've how said are every, they gonna yeah. come for me i've said everything about myself what yeah. are you guys gonna say about me that's yeah. gonna like yeah i love that my first set ever and i think maybe that's why people are like 
yeah, you're the one who do it. Because I did five minutes of dead mom jokes, and she died of cancer. So there's also some cancer jokes in there and addiction jokes in there. Yes. And, like, you know, like all these things, but all dead mom jokes, but wrapped in about my life. And people are like, that was, like, hilarious, but intense. Like, I've never ever seen that many, like, jokes like that back-to-back, and it was just, like, funny and, like, a full set or whatever. And then still to this day, I saw somebody I hadn't seen since before COVID, and they're like, are you still doing dead mom jokes? Because his mom had passed away. He's mm-hmm. like, please do it next time I'm in the audience. Can you bring some out again? I was like, for sure, yeah, just because it made him feel like dead mom's club, like, oh, yeah. whatever. And that made me feel a lot better about, like, the subject, the situation, because I brought it up in a different way. And I noticed even after doing comedy and doing that set, like, when I talked about my mom, I didn't, like, want to get too eyed right away. I didn't want to whatever. It took away like that power of it's so raw and like done there. So yeah, it's it comedy's been very healing. You know, even just having a bad day and going up there and getting to talk about it. Like yeah. that's so yeah, it's it is our therapy in ways. But it's therapy for other people. I mean that's why they go to watch comedy, they go to laugh. I mean mm-hmm. it's I don't know, that's part of why I go out even and force myself because not only am I going to be on stage, but then I'm going to be watching all my friends and, like, colleagues or new people, you know, or people from out of town and see them and I'm laughing. So, like, you know, my my chemicals are all happy in my brain. My brain pharmacy. Smart. Anyway. Yeah. But yeah, so, okay, so then you you were there. When did you go to L, uh, New York then? So you were in L.A. Did you start comedy there? Or no, did you... no. I was just a uh, drug addict. <laughs> and hung out with gang members. That's like, like research whatever. for like comedy. Kids, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, hung out with a lot of uh, essays. Smoked a lot of PCP. And then everybody was dying. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, message. And... Um, <laughs> And PSA about drugs. <laughs> they might kill you. They may. Or the police. Uh, <laughs> or Los Angeles is pretty heavy. Yeah, with the 90s. Police and, stuff. Mm-hmm. It was awful. But um, the riots came and I got some stuff. And then I was like, I should probably leave here. Everybody's, you know, the city's burning. And also, LA, people look at it like from the movies and they're like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. And it's like sunny and blue sky. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, it is awful. It is absolutely yeah. fucking scary and horrifying. Yeah. I grew up in California, so I know. Yeah, what you're so you know about. where you're from, right? Riverside, right? Riverside. Yeah. Oh God! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no wonder you smoked meth. I'm sorry, sorry, but that's like the mo of the Riverside County. You guys are cut from the same thread. Yeah. Especially, especially in the late '80s, early '90s. That's where I was there in the late '80s. I was I moved out of there in like uh, I want to say '92. I moved up to Northern California just to get away oh, from nice. all that shit. Yeah, yeah. And then I got into Coke. Yeah, well, now you're upscale. <laughs> Marin uh. County, coming to a line. <laughs> you don't have to smoke it up here, honey. I, you know. But they think it's all washy, pretty clean. Even yeah, you know, like that's weird. the Hollywood Boulevard and stuff. I mean, like, no. It's like, it's not Excuse all the Chinese me. theater and the whatever. We used to go yeah. over in the summer. It's just because uh, my family was out in California. We kind of make the runs before we went to Mexico. But they were in Compton, Gardena. Usually that's the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Come yeah. on, the run. Yeah. I'm so sorry. God, you guys. We would spend there some. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have a guest in the studio. Which, please don't mind her. Um, but yeah, we go to Compton, like Gardena. They're there now, like Paramount, Garfield, like that whole area of LA, and it's much different than you know. Like and meanwhile, think. it's not L.A. Like, it, I mean, it's that's not the L.A., thing too. yeah. Like, I, people, I'll meet people in New York when I lived in New York, and they're like, oh, shit, you're from L.A.? She's from L.A. And I'm like, oh, shit, girl, where are you from? And she's all, Carpinteria? I'm like, bitch, no. <laughs> Just take it, uh, Inland like, Empire. Yeah. Next Go on. to it. But, but also, also most big cities have all the ones pushed together, though. Everything's yeah. like one massive conglomerate, unfortunately. That's how Phoenix is, too. I hate it. Ugh, that was the worst. <sighs> <sighs> <laughs> but yeah, and then I went to New York and I was like, New York City, big, you know, skyscrapers and everything. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Stevie Wonder. And I, uh, I, I immediately got hooked on heroin because they sold it at the store. Like it was what? so, I, mean, I, I was, it was a candy land. Let me just say, Sammy Davis Jr. was right. It's the candy man. I was oh in heaven. I lived on first and first. And it was the mid '90s, and it was very dangerous and very it dark. Was like like post I had family club in New York. Scene, right? Post yeah. club kid scene, or like uh, yeah. I mean, there was clubs. Oh. I don't know. No, like the late '80s, early '90s, like club kid scene. Where the, yeah, yeah, that was a club kid scene, but it wasn't. Yeah. It was more in New York than it was okay. in LA. No, but you went to I New, went York. New York. Yeah, oh, New you mean York. like lollipops and that shit? Yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You were really past. I the early stages of raves. Remember those? Yeah, because like, I, it was like I the went, limelight. The first rave I went to was in '87. I didn't well, like it. Yeah, that was yeah it was like the limelight days and all those clothes. Different things I like went that, to but, punk um, rock shows see, and took a lot cool. of acid, nice. and which is a bad combination. But punk rock yeah. and acid does seem like, I took acid oh, once and went to like a hip hop 
atmosphere don't DJ. Remember, that don't was you rad. The dead shows. Yeah. Shit? That's, See, you know. that seems better than yeah. punk rock. Well, I, I was into punk rock too, but. The like, acid there? Oh. We would do, like, you would go to dead shows. The dead was traveling all over the place. Now they call <laughs> them rainbow still... gatherings. You know, you got the rain. You know about the rainbow <laughs> gatherings. <laughs> but, uh, They're about to have one here. I just did. Um, a little bit, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but. We would go to the dead shows, and we wouldn't even go fucking see the concert. No, you stay in the parking lot. Parking lot, yeah. getting fucking high. Mm-hmm. That's it. Free acid. Yeah. I mean, I had I only found out about the dead because the punk rockers that I hung out with. Like I used to tie dye my hair, and they were like, "You're a fucking deadhead, man." And I was yeah. like, "What is that? That sounds bad. I don't want to be that." And <laughs> and they're like, "No, no, no. You take acid all the time. You tie dyed your hair. You roller skate. Like I would roller skate at oh, the punk whoa. rock shows. Like <laughs> like oh my god, <laughs> like just in, lost." <laughs> yeah, a lost child and um and they were like no we got to bring you we're gonna bring you and so my first dead show was with a bunch of peace punks like iconoclasts and you know they were all uh like vegetarian you know they were vegan too so we got along and um and uh they took me to the dead and then people started giving me acid and i was like you're right i am a deadhead (laughs) totally a deadhead (laughs) whatever that means yes that's more free acid oh my god it was so fantastic but then i was also hanging around with the cholos Mm -hmm. so in l.a it's so mixed up and what we were, I was in junior high. So it was like junior high, you know, seventh, eighth grade, you're with the, the Mexican kids are mm-hmm. with you. You're smoking PCP. I, or at least I was every day after school, we'd go <laughs> hang out in this garage, smoke First PCP. Time. Then I would hang out with the punk rockers, like on the weekend, take some acid, go to the shows, take the bus for like an hour and a half into fucking downtown LA. And then the, um, the hippies were like a whole new batch. And so the essays were so funny, man. They were like, what are you like? Oh, I went to the dead show. I was like, Oh, you guys would have loved it. It was so crazy. And we're just running around and there's no rules and there's no cops and it's fucking insane. And the essay's like, take a step back. And they're like, but you took that acid. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I took acid. And they're like, I don't fucking take no acid, man. <laughs> and it was just like Cheech and Chong. And I was like, Oh my God, you sound just like Cheech and Chong. And they're like, no, but like my cousin. And I'm like, no, you're sounding too much like him. Well, and then yeah. they go, but wait, yes. What is it like at this dead show? Is it just like a bunch of dirty hippies sleeping on the ground? And I'm like, you are so correct. Yes. So, yeah. so correct. <laughs> and you were like the fucking funniest yes. and the smartest people I ever knew. I love that you live both worlds, though. That's all like of the worlds. Amazing. I, <laughs> I skimmed in all the worlds. That's I was so like, hey, Gotta hey. be eclectic. Gotta see what you like and what you don't like. Or maybe you just like it all. I, I, think, that, a lot of I think it was that way for everybody. I think everybody was very time. diverse. I was very diverse in every mm-hmm. like little culture mm-hmm. like we would go to compton and yeah. go to reggae shows and yep. shit i mean it the first time i walked through a metal detector i was like what the fuck is this what are we, what they are put we one doing? up we had the first one in um our high school that was in my neighborhood fairfax high school was the first metal oh, detector high weird. school because people used to get their <laughs> blown off in the because there was oh. crips and stuff, you guys. But I mean, it was, it's on Melrose Avenue. It doesn't seem very threatening at all. But they would, you know, the kids. The, the kids. kids. Yeah. The kids are dangerous. I had a few. Oh, you should call them. That. Whatever. We'll have time another time. But at some point, I'm going to call my, my cousin at some point. I don't have his actual number right now. But he wants to call in to talk about Compton in the 90s. Yeah. Because him and my other two cousins were there. Uh, Living it up real gangster-like. Um, they called it the jungle. That was the nickname for it. It was wild there. Uh, but we would the go jungle. there and just, like, our parents would let us just go to, like, yeah, just go take some, uh, your friends to, and your flip-flops to go to the pool in Compton. And here's a towel. And bye. See you later. And it was just, like, us. And we're, like, seven and eight. And now I'm, like, why did my parents? Did they not realize it was that bad at the time? But it's not. It wasn't, but it wasn't because, because anywhere was... you don't like, even hearing people are like, do this, do that. I'm like, I feel it's perfectly not... fine walking around the yeah. war zone for the most part. You and just guess what? Act Compton, like you know where you're going. Compton had lawns. I didn't have a lawn. I lived in a fucking hotel room. Com- oh, my friends in Compton lawns. had fucking lawns. And I was like, That's how come everybody's hilarious. scared to come over here? It's so pretty. That's hilarious. <laughs> like, I was confused as fuck. I didn't understand anything about LA. Oh my God. I'm like, this is racist, right? <laughs> this is all really racist, right? <laughs> like, all my Mexican friends live by the freeway, and all my, my mm-hmm. white friends live up in the thing. You know, it was just You see weird. everybody being pushed yeah. into different neighborhoods. Because like, I took the bus a well, lot, so I was like, mm-hmm. I was on the bus, so I knew, you know, the bus. Everybody's bus like, oh LA. my God, are you okay? <laughs> are you all right? Oh my God, your, your life must be so down the drain. That's how everybody... And then you go to New York, and then you're crazy if you don't take public transit, yes. so... Yeah, New York's uh, great, but comedy actually saved me from heroin. Yes. I, I was a, uh, I was, I had lost every, I'd lost my job and my house, my apartment, my boyfriend. My boyfriend was this stick up kid, you guys. Um, 
I dated this Irish guy named Patrick who is a stick-up kid. But and if for those who don't know oh, what God. that is, <laughs> you haven't listened to Gangstar in a long time. Uh, a stick-up kid is a, is a guy or, or a gal who walks around and, and robs people with their gun for money or stuff, mm-hmm. you know. And you just whip, you stick up here, whip, stick them up. Mm-hmm. And so uh, he was that. And... We were heroin lovers, and he got uh, in jail. And so you will get in jail if you stick up. So you can don't get in jail up. too, kids. You can get in jail. And um, he happened to be at the, uh, I don't remember what f- type of facility it was. It was um, upstate New York. And uh, my aunt, who's a Jew, she said to me uh, when he was locked up, she's like, you're not doing well. You're missing Patrick because I was homeless. Oh. You're not doing well. I'm like, obviously, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm on people's couches. And you're missing Patrick. I'm going to take you to see him at Christmas. I'm like, oh my God, oh. really? She, what am I? I'm a Jew. I'm a Christmas. What does it mean to me? So she drives me up to, because it's right near where she lives. So she drives me up to the prison. And if anyone's ever visited prison, I was already old hat at this place, LA County. I'd already done it. But it's horrible. They treat you like a prisoner. So. Just P.S. Mm-hmm. Beware. Um, <clears throat> but I go in there, and Patrick is like the fucking man. He's like the most popular. Aww. Yes, yeah. yes. I will, I will take this all. That makes me feel happy for you. <laughs> it's the worst case scenario, but best case thing. You go and your dude's doing great. He's doing great. He's popular. In he was very popular. He was the barber, and everyone called him Irish. And they were like, "Yo, Irish, it. you gonna you gonna hook up my my fate tonight?" And he's like, "Yeah, I got you. I got you." <laughs> was they doing the Oz called? No, did they call it doing Oz Irish? Maybe I'm wrong. Did they? Oh Maybe not. I didn't watch that show. It show. seemed too familiar. Yeah, yeah. I remember you that didn't show have too. To and watch I think it. they did have Irish, Irish. people. And I think one of the guys was, was Irish. Irish. Oh yeah, yeah. like they literally. called him Irish. Yeah. 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 I like well, that. I think that was like the first. There's only you so know, many nicknames in jail for white people. Well, I think <laughs> that was kind of like the first. In- I, I don't know if it was the first one, but it feels like it was kind of like the first incarnation of people getting nicknames from where they're from. It's very right. military and it's very jail. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, Texas, you know, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden Saving Private Ryan came and we were like, eh, this sucks. You know, uh, <laughs> hey, I'm, a, I'm from Brooklyn. My name's Brooklyn. You know, like, stop. Oh, we can't. And it was Steven Spielberg. <laughs> we got it. We that. <laughs> yeah. It's like, my name is Ryan and I have white teeth, even though I've been <laughs> missing for quite some time. <laughs> I have the whitest fucking Hollywood teeth. I get very upset at teeth. Damon has a huge white mouth. Movies upset me with the teeth. I get very distracted. That's actually interesting. I've never thought about the continuity Mm -hmm. with that. Huh. There's a, there's a Denzel movie. Me. Oh, yeah. Watch The Little Things. The Little Things uh, on HBO, I think it's what called. What are you talking about? The, like the, the teeth. teeth. Like, the if teeth. it's dirty teeth. or not. Like, if it's if Castaway, <gasps> if, like, the, and the Castaway, I haven't oh, even noticed. Tom, he comes back with, like, clean time. ass teeth. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. It's That's very so unbelievable. It takes me right out of the whole scene. Mm-hmm. So, uh, The Little Things is um, Denzel is, like, is starring as, like, a small town sheriff. You know, but then he comes in and he's like, hey, y'all, like, I'm like, yeah, like, what did you fucking, what did they give you a raise and give you teeth instead of your money? Like, what the fuck? And then it's that other dude with the big, he's got that big mouth, the big uh, tattoo uh, girl with the dragon tattoo guy. He's got those choppers. And then there's the other guy. Oh, I can't remember his name with the long, greasy hair. And he's like, and he's got Hollywood teeth. And I'm like, stop it, Jared Leto. He had great greasy hair, but then the teeth. I'm like, bro. Yeah. Yeah, he looks like a homeless person with good teeth. Anyway, That's nice eyes. He's like a really handsome. He's a handsome homeless, um, which is a lot in Los Angeles. Was that Irish? Here, I don't appreciate that. Was Irish a handsome homeless? I, Irish was not ha- uh, homeless. He was handsome. Not homeless. Oh, well, yeah, so. it was a stick of Yeah, you were homeless after that. Right? Right. He had a career. He had money. <laughs> Other people's money, but he had money. Were you less sad after you went to go visit him? I was. I was proud of him. I felt proud of him. I was, this I was like, I have to boy. know the end of the story. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great yeah. So wait, when did you start doing comedy then? How long had you been in New York? And when did you decide, like, this is, like, what I'm... Let's just go fucking do it. Uh, I think... Well, I was real hooked on heroin. So I didn't have a job or anything when I was on heroin. So I had to go get a job. And I knew I loved comedy, but I didn't know what that meant. So mm-hmm. I went to a comedy club and I got a job as a waitress. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah, at the comic that's strip. smart. Up, up Your harem, harem brain led you well. You know, I don't know You're how I'm smart. still alive. You're <laughs> Actually, I really You're don't. smart cookie. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know what it is. Uh, I a lot of say, fight in this one. <laughs> I won't say good genes because those people are fucked. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, uh, what happened? PCP? 
Um, he used to be comedy. You got a good job at oh, so I got a job as a waitress at the comic strip. See, once in a while, uh, it shows. I, I can't. You know, I, I like can't the tangents. Tangents, so I love tangents. Tangents. Okay, so we're great. Um, yeah. So the comic strip, <laughs> Uptown New York City. I go there, and that's where I got to see Ashley Larry. I got to see a lot of your favorites. I got to see uh, um, David Tell was a regular there. Nice. Uh, Caroline Ray, a fantastic oh, fucking comic, yeah. great comic. What, whatever funny. happened to her? You know, I like feel she like... had such good. Like I mean, she got that show, and it was over. She got Sabrina, mm-hmm. and then she got like a talk show or like a game right. show or something. She, was, she started or acting more and being yeah. on more, and then she wasn't doing. Then she just that really. split. But what I about a, Todd Berry? Have you ever, Todd Berry. Oh, oh Todd Berry. Todd Berry big, big pal. Big pal. Yeah. Uh-huh. He's this tiny man, but a big pal. Uh-huh. Um, he's <laughs> tiny. Big fucking head, too. He's got a giant head, like an alien. Like an alien person. <laughs> Is that Just why a, he seems taller? Because, like, a, like a brat doll. That's why he seems taller, because his head makes him appear taller. Yeah, it's too elongated. <laughs> like a balloon. Yeah, he's a delight. Um, <laughs> we love him. I hate Amy Schumer, though. Can I talk oh, shit about her? Funny. Yeah, I don't like yeah, her. Funny. I used Let's to like her it. in the beginning, but I don't like her anymore. I like, like... <laughs> like that sounds bad, but no, I don't. She was accused of stealing jokes. And... Oh yeah, she's a big stealer. Yeah, mm-hmm. she's oh, yeah. pretty bad. People I, called yeah. me after her first special and were like, "What the fuck?" And I was like, "I know." Really? She doesn't do them as well, but I know. Really? I know. You well, because in New York, you know, in New York, it's very, very common to get writers in the room. Mm, so yeah. you, you don't know mm-hmm. who the fuck these writers are. We got ripped off from uh, Saturday Night Live new, uh, constantly. Really? And they're still doing How it. How is I mean, that they, not they, at least? Like, no, there's, it's still they, happening. They did it to but Ted Alexander. they can Alexander. just show up they to the club have, and like, take your jokes? Well, they even have, like, say, um, I can't remember who it was. Uh, 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 Kevin Hart even does this. He has people that will go to comedy shows Mm -hmm. and steal jokes, write them down, Mm -hmm. and then he'll rework them to Mm -hmm. sound like his. Is that what like Mencia did? Like one like, word. Mencia like, would completely rip you oh, off oh, okay. and then just throw some Spaniard in there. Yeah. But <laughs> like, is it Spaniard? <laughs> I think he I think he means Spanglish. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yes, it happens constantly. I used to get stolen from a lot, and when I first started, I was doing a lot of vagina material, and a boy was on stage at a show that I was in the other room at, and I got off stage, and I went in the room to watch, and he's doing my joke, and I'm like, what? And I'm going to tell you the joke. I used to call my clip the dolphin, because it just makes sense, right? Just, <laughs> you know, and I'm constantly in there, just, <laughs> Just, I'm oh, hungry. Eee, I'm God. sad. Eee, I'm, you know, whatever. Oh. So it was all the dolphin, the dolphin, dolphin. That's this amazing. motherfucker that. is up there doing that. And I'm like, how is he going to pull this off? And it's a funny joke. So people let, and people love the sound. People mm-hmm. love a dolphin. It's a, it's a Lisa Frank, <laughs> you know, it's all good. So, so he's up there doing it. And I'm like, this motherfucker. And he comes off stage and I go, Hey man, cause I have never been shy about walking right up to people. I fucking talk shit to David Cross. Cause that fool tried to pull some shit on me. at a show and I was like, uh-uh. David Cross, I Good used for you. to like back maybe his first three albums, but then he turned like full blown political. Like, like every joke was political. I don't follow him. His comedy did change. Because I watched him. You know, there used to be a a show uh, in New York where people would get up and just riff a bunch. And so I went up and I riffed on this thing that I was working on. And it was about, like, pubic hair. And it was a long time ago about, like, shaving into different things. And I'm a Jew, so I don't like the Hitler stash. You know, I had all these things. (laughs) And people were like, oh, really? This is one. (laughs) And he got up and was bombing and was like, did I tell you guys I shaved my pubes? Mm Mm-hmm. And then he fucking went and did like almost like making fun of, of my material, but to get laughs for his like, yeah, it's a Hitler stash. So this is the Either same way time that they're coming laughs. up. You're coming up because David Cross didn't start getting popular, and same with yeah. Pat Pat Oswald. Yes, they were they all both, there. Ninety six is when they started busting. So you were there before when they were working shit out. Uh, it was around ninety six. Mm-hmm. Oh, was yeah, it? Luna yeah. Lounge. Yeah, in That's in New awesome. York, wow. Wow. and like those guys and. Seeing, like, we talked about Patrice O'Neill and Patrice O'Neill being, I feel like the, the, the type of comedy that I want to be, I want to, I want to do what Patrice O'Neill did. I want to, I want to have that attitude. And 
the fuck you to everybody around in this business trying to do this business who's not taking it seriously and not oh, working yeah. hard at it and not fucking saying stuff that matters and just kind of getting up and well, it seemed easy or yeah, I probably mm-hmm. get a chick if I hold the mic right. Like you <laughs> suck at fucking dicks, bro. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just so I was telling the kids here it's disheartening because they're like you that doesn't happen in any other at you know, art form or any other business or you don't just show up on the fucking basketball court like I saw this on TV <laughs> fucking kill I can kill this like no yeah, it's disrespectful we if just, you're not actually gonna yeah. yeah but because we don't have a union we don't have a leader we don't have any kind of like continuity or like grouping of like mm-hmm. yeah this is the bl-. I mean I remember in New York they tried to make a union Ted Alexandro really? and fuck Tom Shalhoub. Like there were a bunch of dudes and chicks mm-hmm. who tried to get it together, but there's always a fucking scab. And unfortunately, and scab means you cross the line, mm-hmm. fool. Like you, if you can't be just, just quietly excited for the group and be like, I don't need to take the work right now. Cause yeah. we're going to prove that we're worth enough to get paid yeah. more, to get insurance. We don't have a fucking union. I'm in screen actors guild. I, I was begging the guys at the comedy coalition, that's what they called it, uh, to, <laughs> to like come over to SAG and like maybe we can bring some people over here and get it together. But there's always these motherfuckers that are like, I'll fucking work, I'll go take the pay, I'll go fucking do the right. thing. Crumbles like, everybody oh. else's like hard work and their persistence. Yeah. yeah, there's just too many of us, man. We can't get a fucking hold of it. Yeah, and then we're all over the place. Now. Oh yeah, there's, oh, there's so more. many now. Yeah, I mean, when I'm I started, them, it was obviously. <laughs> when I started, this was not something that people wanted to do. Not know, at all. Interesting. No With the way. come up of social media and stuff, it's like become more. And the podcasting. My thing too is that though, mm, I know I'm new. I'm like mm, coming up on two years in the fall. But uh, like these TikTok stars are like, I'm funny on TikTok. Let me go do this on a stage. And you're like, it's not the same beast at all. Like, not, you know, but unfortunately, Carla, <sighs> the club owners have been doing this for years now. When YouTube stars were coming out before TikTok, oh, even, yeah, there's we were getting, stars. there weren't any headlining positions available because the fucking YouTubers were selling yeah. out. And how do you compete with a sold out crowd mm-hmm. in a comedy? See, comedy clubs are like casting agents. We don't need them. Mm-hmm. You know, like we don't need them. They're the middleman and they're yeah. making fuck ton of money off of all of us. And yeah. we just haven't figured out how we can, you know, people are so proud. Like comics are so proud. No one wants to make the well, call. I think it's podcasting now is where they're finding out where they can make money at on their own. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, podcasting, monetizing their acting. shit. Like, yeah, acting. Like, you know, a lot of these comedians have figured out during the pandemic, I don't need a fucking agent. I don't need fucking Hollywood. I'm going to make my own shit. Like, you know. So. There is more of, I guess, yeah, DIY in a way. So yeah, and some things is good, like social media and things like that is definitely helping. And then the other, it's like muddies up stuff. So yeah, it's like she's how... She's talking about like a person that has never <laughs> oh, done yeah. comedy. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden just they've got out. all these fucking influence. And they're like, they're considered an influencer. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's what you're talking about. Those ones yeah. driving And they're crazy. shoving, they're shoving the comics that have worked for years and years mm-hmm. off of the stage. And what had happened uh, for a while as well, and what's still happening are the bigger comics like Seinfeld and, and Louie and these guys. They don't want to play colleges anymore. Oh, Rock, he doesn't want to go near a college. Oh, no. Horrifying. And what? And and that used to be a really, really yeah, lucrative fucking circuits. gig, man. You know how many fucking comedy <sighs> albums were made at fucking yeah. colleges, yeah. dude? Like pretty much every yeah. one of them in the nineties. Like, Before the colleges were bunch I heard of crybabies. A lot of my bunch favorite of comedians. Fucking crybabies, yeah. and they're like, you can't, you haven't. How could you? Don't you know? And I'm like, God, leave me fucking be. And and. You know, uh, not to get too like I'm okay to do, you know, I always feel like I'm always defending what I do, but I really, I feel like, yes, I am a white chick. Yes, I will do characters that are non white, but no, I will never make fun of them. Right. Do do you see? There's never, to me, it's showcasing. To Mm -hmm. me, I'm telling back a story that Mm -hmm. I had happen to me. Always I'm the butt of the joke as usual. And here are the people that were in the story. Yeah. Now, white people, most of the time, from my experience, are very upset when I do this. And... What's funny to me is, or tragic, is that the people who whose character, whose ethnicity or whatever I'm doing are like, that was yeah, fucking awesome. It. And I'm like, because I'm, I'm honoring you. Mm-hmm. I'm not like, 
you know, I don't there's even know difference. what I would do. Yes. Like, duh, duh, duh. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. There's a big difference. And yeah. then you're making it more entertaining for them to be watching you because you're having different, you know, characters in it and whatever. And it's nothing, yeah, against them. And you're right. Some white and people looked, get real, like, locked up. Like, oh, talking about other races. Yeah. No, 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 don't do that. They're going to cancel us. They're going to, yeah. And, and not only that, but you've already grooved yourself in the yes. black rooms and used these voices. Like, yeah, but nobody knows that well, I know that, but they can go fuck know, off. That must Thank be you. I yes. feel the you same can, way, If Larry. you've already done that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, go suck a dick. Exactly. Like, you've obviously done it in a way that is not offensive to black people or nope. whatever fucking nationality you've mm -hmm. been in front of. Nope. You know, so they need to get over themselves. Just the whites. Yes. Yeah, the whites get upti upsidey whitey. It's so unfortunate. Did you say unionized Norma Ray? You know, that Norma Ray's. Oh, uh, um, Norma Ray was a movie from the seventies that where she <laughs> walked out of her job, right? And she yeah. and she picketed. And I was should like, know we this. We need a union. And <laughs> sorry, Dad. It's my sister. She can we grew up with a lot of cinema. Like that. Oh, okay. So you. It's a Norma forward. Ray's. I'm a. No <laughs> 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 um, Greetings from El Paso, yeah. my cousin. And that's things. when uh, Sally Field had her, I think, that was when she won the Oscar, and you like me, you really like me. That was her oh, speech. that movie. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I Well, no, out. that was her speech. You like me, you really thing. like me. But she won for the movie Norma Ray. Yeah. Correct? Yeah, Am I, I right? Know. I have to go with the kids in the back. The yeah. movie you really like me? Did that movie? Never mind. We'll get into it later. I feel like I saw it around the same time as like A Long Walk Home or something. I don't know. Also very deep, hard, hard movie. Um, yeah. yeah. Huh? Yeah, I get real depressed over here, guys. Uh, a lot of my... Like those fucking oh, yeah, a lot of... It's all my mom watched. Just oh, no. So all you saw was rape and murder. It was like that and like Kevin Costner movies. Kevin Costner. So more rape yeah. and murder. Yeah. Some <laughs> Lifetime movies I'd hear my mom from the other room. Hanging by the balls. Like wow. To hang like, somebody by the balls because they like were beating their wife or something damn i got like all my cousin i'm just gonna shout real quick to like half my family's watching no i got way more cousins than this i got like 13 on my dad's side like oh, look at all the buses so we got us acero that victor acero that's also my cousin on my mom's side and then sarah's my sister aaron's my cousin what's up you guys geneva's my sister what's up marisa's my cousin what's up all right love carlita you, guys. you are natural <laughs> i love you carlita i love you carlita uh, uh, uh. you're a natural I boom it. i love if aaron had a voice like that that's great. Oh, Aaron. She looks a little more like me. She's paley. Like Paley. Carlita, you're amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Carlita, no, she, you're uh, very funny. She, lady. she was raised in Burke. She was a little bit of a Burke. <laughs> you know, Burke you guys, has an act, like a certain accent, though. Yeah, no you have else. the same as LA. It, well, it a has little bit more of a native. It has more of a native tinge it's, here than yeah. in LA. Because in LA, it's like, it's it's definitely like more Mexican. Like everyone's mm -hmm. like, yeah. yeah. Like in New York, everyone speaks a little Yiddish. Like the uh, the Korean guy's like, yeah. a shmir. Yes, a shmir on the bagel. Yeah. Shmir. So and you're like, yes. And you're like, everyone, oh my God, he speaks my language. Everybody wants coffee. Yeah. Everyone's like, we got it. We totally That's get it. Hilarious. But here it's like, oh, the, you know, it's kind of like land before man. You it's know, like, like it was like oh, Canadian so accent a little bit in there. Like, uh huh. I know, huh? And like all you. Uh, I, uh, I, I know, attribute huh? it to the Midwest. It's like a Midwest. Well, I, mean, I asked a girl. Here does time. sound yeah. Midwest. I was like, I asked a girl. Yalo. Yeah. I, no. I was like, I was like, are you? My sister Sarah. She's like, no. I was like, she's. Like, I was born here. I was like, you got a fucking. Midwest yeah, there's accent. this like Midwest, like Midwest, oh, but like gosh. up near the border Midwest, like oh, no. or like a little yeah. bit of a Wisconsin. My sister Sarah can't say double L words to save her life, so I'd go to like her restaurant at Denny's and be like, "Hey, can I get one of those uh, milkshakes? What kind do you have?" And she's like, "I got chocolate, strawberry, and white." Because I'd always make her say vanilla, vanilla, vanilla Paolo, like a pillow you sleep on, sure. marshmallow, um, <laughs> yellow, the color yellow. Uh, the, yeah, I can't remember I like any it. double L words. But for some reason, she has that, and me and my other sister don't have that. But my dad also says like Chicago and like piano. Why do you say piano, <laughs> Dad? You're from El Paso, like <laughs> the British. Oh yeah, you're from Chicago. Chicago. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, the accent. No, I just I like sound like it. a newscaster a little bit. I, I like it, but I, I, I'm I, very much like my mom was like a chameleon type of lady where she would just turn into everybody that mm. she was around. And it was like embarrassing sometimes because you're like, Ma, you're not Chinese. <laughs> you know? Like it was always Did like. Bring out the Chinese oh, accent. Oh, 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 oh. I am not fooling you. And she, oh, you had these in bigger size? Like with the slipper. I'm like, how's that? How's I'm like lighting. I'm like bursting into flames at the fucking, at the, at the shop. And the man behind the counter is like. Yeah, what size do you need? And I'm like, oh my god, he's totally down with this fucking white lady. Like, oh, eight, eight, 
And I'm like, oh my God, I've watched this interaction. My mom was uh, was insane. She worked in Harlem when I lived in New York. She lived in New York. She, lived in, she worked in Harlem and she goes, Jesse, I'm... I'm up in Harlem with all your people. I'm like, what? <laughs> You're my mom. I love this. Oh my god. She was a trip. <laughs> the people that raised you. Yes. <laughs> you know. Oh, that's she so loved. Oh, she she preferred. You know, she always told me she preferred uh, black people. She always told me. I feel more comfortable. Oh, no offense, Larry. <laughs> no, she was like, you know, Jesse. Like we were having coffee one time, and there was a baby crying behind us, like a white baby, and she goes. Oh, God, somebody shut that fucking kid up, right? And I'm like, first of all, you're a mom. Like, what's the deal with the hating of the babies? And she looks at me in the eye and she goes, Jesse, you know I prefer children of color. (laughs) All right, well, let's get the check. It's been a nice visit, Mom. Oh, that's good to see you. Children of color. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, She's like, well, they're just, I mean, have you seen a white baby? Oh. I'm like, well, huh? You mean like me? Oh, like I don't know. I just, just, I ugly. did you love me? What happened here? No, no. Like, no, Children, no. they ruin, my, they ruin you. I told them the BS show, but like my grandma, who had never even come to the United States, she like passed away in Mexico. But she told my mom, if you ever make it up there, have babies with a black man because they make the most beautiful mixed children or something. And I think subconsciously, like me and my one of my sisters were like kind of had that in our brain in high school not only the reason why i do but i date everybody but i was like yeah i need a mixed baby they're so cute but like, so bad because <laughs> i like white so any baby i have would probably come out looking a little bit white maybe i don't know <laughs> my sister who's a lot darker than i am she had some kids well she did have them with white guys but they all look like me a little bit so and she's she does not look like me but yeah um but we wanted Let's the mixed just babies wrap it up how about that can how we about all... we wrap it up just use two i don't give can a fuck we... does anyone use condoms anymore please have a fucking condom in your pocket what is happening do oh, people think aids is does. gone aids is not gone kids no. hi it's still here and it's gross they're like ew ew yeah. big big so scabs herpes. they're like yeah herpes is disgusting like school shootings yolo yolo yeah, let's exactly. just knock each other up and get oh we have number one chlamydia rate in the state here pajamas oh, we oh my god i can't believe i just Are came from winners? la because in la we have billboards that say ready for it syphilis tsunami and then no, it's a giant wave it doesn't yeah. get checked amazing. today get checked today syphilis tsunami syphilis tsunami i want a punk rock back band called that i mean it's a great name for a band punk rock. <laughs> syphilis tsunami. i can't Sorry. say that i'm super into we're it syphilis tsunami. we're syphilis tsunami we're in a rock are we starting the band now i mean i'd love to <laughs> Let's do this. i play nothing but punk rock that's okay you can <laughs> sing <laughs> just yell a lot yeah just bring on that like anger from your childhood, from childhood. Yeah. oh yeah i could do it's it perfect Call it spot. Spot. We're called childhood trauma and we're here to rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this first one's about how my mom didn't give me any underpants. One, two, three, four. <laughs> shitting on the floor. <laughs> shitting on the floor. All we do is shit on the floor. Like an animal. Like an animal. <laughs> we're sorry, Ben. It's great. Mm, I, I think we can do it. I think it's done. We're we already have our promo first... picks after this. It's yeah, coming out. First cut. It's ready Robin, uh, okay. Angel Lopez. On how love is. Speaking of Max, um, condom, oh condoms are so 90s. Oh my god. And you know what? AIDS is still here, Angel. <laughs> love you. Uh, oh I did pass my breakup test from him, though, so we are all clean there. <laughs> I like what a whore Thank you, you are. Angel. <laughs> Who's the whore? Everybody Who's here. <laughs> I like how my whole family's on here. It's the only other. Well, never mind. I won't get into my sex how come life now. Everybody still ha- how come everyone has the same last name? I thought you were like cousins and shit. Cause, oh, because they're all from my dad. Those ones are all my dad's. But there was one, Aceto, and that was from my mom's side. Because my dad has four. There's four boys in the family, only only one girl. So like most of us have Vasquez. 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 Katie Shaver. Love you, Carly. That's my friend. Oh, my sister's best friend. She's like a sister. She's in Georgia, too. Thanks, guys, for watching. Oh, yeah, so comedy. You started comedy. Thanks, everybody. As a, a, we're still, we still oh, have a Oh, I was a cover. junkie waitress in New York City. Junkie waitress. Oh, yeah. And then uh, there was a, a guy there called, and I don't know, Larry, you might know this name, Rick Shapiro. Oh, yeah. Very insane person. Quite loon. Did he shooting himself or something? No, no. Oh, God. <laughs> I only laugh because... You only wish. You know, no, it's... Uh, you he know, was nuts. There are people, yes. And there are people that I've run into in my life and they're like, oh my God, I thought you were dead. You know, like, and that's Wait, really? what I felt like with Rick. Like, I thought he shot himself. Like, oh my God. <laughs> You don't hear him anymore. Like, he's not... No, you don't. He got MS. I shouldn't laugh. Oh. He, got M- he got MS. Why he am got I MS. laughing now? Terrible. <laughs> oh, heavy. Oof. 
okay. getting real today, guys. It's getting warm in here. Um, <laughs> yeah, he got sick, so he uh, went away. But he's still around. But the most insane people are the funniest motherfuckers. Yes. Who they just can't handle. And he, he was a regular at the comic strip in New York City, uptown, where I worked as a junkie waitress. So he would come up to me and be like, you're fucking funny. And he'd do like this weird thing with his hand. And he'd be like, I could tell you're really funny, but he wanted to fuck. But anyway, he knew I was funny somehow. He wanted to fuck me, but he knew I was funny. <laughs> so I was like, uh-huh, whatever. So we'd do voices to each other, and I'd always be like, shut up, you fucking fool. And he'd be like, see, I told you, what are you, some sort of essay? You know, like he <laughs> always was like very excited. So he goes, you know, I'm, I'm casting my one-man show. And I go, okay, sir, a one-man show is one man. I, and I'm casting it, and I need you in the cast. Casting. And I'm like, oh, oh, am I the, the cast? <laughs> what the yeah. fuck is happening? And he goes, I'm casting all the voices in my head. Oh, oh that's amazing. Okay. So that makes sense. So that makes sense. That's fucking hilarious. freak. So he's like, you'll be all the women. I'm like, mm, great. So uh, little did I know what I was signing up for, though. I mean, his dick was out a lot of the time. It was a live, I mean, it was a live show. And it ended up being like three hours. His twin brother was in it, who he doesn't get along with at all. So they would awesome. actually have like real fist <laughs> It was yes, so that, bizarre. That, that happened a lot back in the 90s. Dudes pulled their dicks out. Yes, there was a lot that of dicks, That was the mod modern-day dick pic. Like we said, in the olden times, in the guys. Olden times, in the olden oh. times. Oh, on, Waving it around. By the way, Angel says medical advances, they have a pill for everything now. All right, continue. <laughs> so he had his dick out. <laughs> Angel, but hey. just wrap it up, baby. It still feels really good, I promise. Oh, my God. I'm so worried for the youth. Uh, so anyhow, you He's guys are supposed to be all of our <laughs> leaders. Don't have herpes and AIDS to lead us. Do you know what I mean? I just want some clean leaders. Mm, I guess. Yes, we already that. missed out on that. <laughs> uh, so, so you saw a dick. Oh, <laughs> so, 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 so he took us out. But one of the scenes that he had us write was uh, together. We had a scene that we wrote together was I had to write one joke. And I had to come out on stage and do one joke. And then I went backstage. And that was it for that scene. A lot, most of the scenes were, like, quiet. There was Tom Waits music a lot in the background. It was so <laughs> fucking weird. It was completely <laughs> weird. Like, I would see Tom people Waits. in the street. And they'd be like, hey, aren't you in that, like, weird epic play where it's, like, three hours and there's a dick out and there's Tom Waits? I'm like, yeah, that was. did you enjoy it? Some of it. You oh, know, like, yeah. people are very honest in New York. Yeah, it was really, it was so weird. So this one joke that I had to write, I wrote it, and I went out and I did it. And I, I'll never forget the first night I went out and did it uh, to a crowd of people. And the laughter that I got from the joke was... It was a better high than the than the dope. So I was like, oh, yes. okay. And he was like, I told you. Because he was a ex druggy too. So he was taking me to meetings and stuff and um, putting me up <laughs> in his apartment. All right. <laughs> Got to stick him up, guy. Put him oh, up. Oh, <laughs> God. And, um, and then I was hooked, man. I was fucking hooked. I was like, that's better than the heroin I've been doing. I got to do that mm -hmm. more. So what, what did... The heroin. Did you shoot up? Did you smoke? No, it? I was a snorter. I was a smoker mm -hmm. and a snorter. Yeah. yeah, I was a snorter. Yeah. I don't like needles. Yeah, Even though we're tattooed like maniacs. And I'm oh, like, yeah, I don't like a needle. A <laughs> yeah, I'm scared of a needle, though. I don't, <laughs> to me, it's different. Me it was, to me, it was just too doctory. Like, yeah. as far as like, oh, man, what if I fucking shoot like a bubble in yeah, my brain or something? Yeah, that's scary. Like, fuck that. I always thought too addictive. I didn't know any mm. heroin addicts who could who could kick as uh, like a snorter that like I knew people that sniffed shit and could kick and I was like hey but I knew kids that did the needle and they could they not yeah. kick and I was like hey kick and smoking much harder too to kick um, good job Larry a little bit not too bad I mean I don't know about the dope but, but the when you're speed. doing when you're trying to especially black heroin when you're trying to make it into a powder form back to a powder form you gotta use a microwave and there's water involved and all this other shit it's just easier to smoke it oh uh, see my east coast uh, was powder yeah you guys got white yeah, mm -hmm. guys got, we got all... black in yeah. California. So, but all of our heroin name. So this is a, a great time for me before I started doing comedy was getting heroin for people that were scared. And I was like, Oh, I got you! I got you! Yes. Oh, you're a little nervous. Yes. I got you! I got you! I was wondering, could you just kick oh, yeah. in an extra ten so I could get a bag? And they're like, Of course! Oh my God, get yourself too! So... And I'd be like, Oh, thanks! And then I just walked down there, and it was. <laughs> First of all, south of Houston was like a battle zone. Like for, there was, I don't think there were street lights. Like it was just like, rah, like go if you will, like enter if you dare. <laughs> and it was all bodegas where like you heard stories of like, oh, don't go to that bodega on um, Attorney and Clinton. No, my homeboy went in there the other day. He got knocked in the head. They put a bag <laughs> over his head and I haven't seen him since. I'm, I haven't seen him. And I'm like, well, how did you know that he had a bag on yeah. his head and got hit in the head? He's like, no, he got pulled out 
out like days later, days later. And I'm like, by the way, I hadn't seen him. So anyway, there were all these crazy <laughs> urban legends of like what would happen mm. if you went down there. And I was like, I don't think so. Like I just came from like gang USA in LA. So I was walking down there and I used to wear these big hoop earrings that said love inside of them. And these Puerto <laughs> yes. Rican guys are like, hey, <laughs> hey love, what's up love? What, what, what? Look at how, look at her, look at, look at her go. Like they were so <laughs> proud of me. Like I was just like, hi guys, um, I've got some money. You have some heroin? And they were like, yeah, we do, but you're crazy. Like, how are you down here? Like, how are you even down here? And I'm like, I don't know. I just thought it was kind of curvy. And so I, I was friends with all them and they were like mm -hmm. hilarious. They thought I was hilarious. I dated a guy that was the heroin dealer. Nice. Um, good for me. Bad yeah. for the homeless people in my neighborhood because he was lighting them a fire. Oh, oh good all. Oh, good all. I will all with you that time. Not a good thing. You don't want to fuck a guy who's that, that kind of reputation. I fucked some really bad reps, but yeah. that is the worst. Don't light don't humans on fire. Oh, no, literally lighting he them on fire. Them. Oh, I thought he was just like ruining the community even more so, lighting no. them on fire, like killing them with bad shit. He was literally. No. <laughs> All right, New York in the 90s. Okay. Wow. Yeah, so it was fun. And also, I'm going to name drop right now. Yeah, do you guys know no. who this is? I'm so impressed with your disgustingness. Larry, you're going to know. Abel Ferrara. Anybody? Mm -hmm. He directed a movie, a beautiful movie called. What is it? Lieutenant. Lieutenant. The bad lieutenant. The bad lieutenant. Ready? Okay. Harvey Keitel is nude in this particular movie. He does a lot of... <laughs> I heard it was drug fuel. It's, it was... I got the heroin for them. A movie. Yeah, I heard it was and it's not fake. Unreal. That yeah, it's not fake. Yeah. Wild. Yeah, Harvey not fake. Cartel was strung out. Everybody on that set. Everyone on that set. Everyone on that set. And Abel and his wife and the whole thing. And I was wow. going to get him heroin. And then he was doing another movie. And he was like, "Jess, I need you to. I need you to take me downtown. I need you to take me." And he's a lot like Rick Shapiro. Like he do like a lot of these to me. <laughs> I need you to take me downtown. Take me downtown. And I'm like, Abel, I'm not taking you downtown, bro. You you don't belong in that area. Yeah. You're it's you're like with the. He wore like. <laughs> leather trench coat i was like sir no and he's like I, i'm gonna i'll get you an extra bag you know and i'm like all right so then i take him down one time and we get out of the <laughs> oh, I'm an easy it's fucking not, it's not never <laughs> it's not it's not hard for me to do if you a you favor a, if you mention a bag of heroin a heroin addict's doing it <laughs> i'm like what oh sure that seems fine uh so i brought him down in a cab and he would he slipped me the he like would always give me money right so money for drugs but money for cabs and money for so he was always slipping me cash just just here, take the, give the, give the, give the guy the, just give him the whole 20, you know? And I'm like, okay. So I'm like, I'm with the cab driver and he's already out of the cab at, at like south of Houston. This is a very dangerous <laughs> time. And so I'm like, oh, thank you. And, and I hear a ruckus, a commotion. And I get out of the thing and I can't see Abel anywhere. All I see are all these dealers. Like, in a oh circle. my God. And they're like, what do you need, bro? What do you need, man? Hey, man. Oh, hey, wow. man. And he's like, hey, what's, hey, hey, what's going on, you guys? Hey, what's happening, guys? And I'm like, like no, Abel, no, no. He's ready to be and, cocky yeah. with <laughs> drugs. He just thought drug book cocky it was, here. I was, but he, what? Yeah. Okay. And got me so frightened. <laughs> but he never he made I it didn't out alive. He though. made it out. I brought him. I was like, he's with me, and they're like, oh shit, hey love. Love. They thought he was on his own, and they were gonna get him. <laughs> I was like, you can't get him. See, he, really, he was lucky to have you I in know. many fashions. Made many. his movie. He's alive to make his movie. <laughs> they even set me yeah, up on a, on a date with one of their guys vincent argo he's now dead and he was oh, a very yeah. old man when they sent me out. oh did you go on the date he went I on did, the date I sure did how'd it go an extra bag for you hey. um, oh <laughs> wait was this like one of those dates yeah it was one was of those it, dates oh, i gotcha. mean i went just with him we went to dinner i didn't eat much <laughs> you know it was great i went to your date just a ten dollar bag we'll get you Oh, yeah. Man. So, but then the, I discovered the laughter was better than the heroin, yeah, so that was better. great. Yeah. Mm. Just kept doing it and kept doing it. So, where did it, where was the first place that you went up there? That place that you worked? Yeah, you said. And then, did you keep doing it like that week, or was like the? This was a show. This was a one man show that went on and on and on. Yeah. And so it was like a run that he had for and then after... like a month, maybe. Okay. And then I started to try to go out and do stand up, like com open mics and stuff like that. And it was, um, it was, it was hard i was, was gonna really ask hard. how you found that a being you know new york and like the 90s being a female coming into it there's less than even than there are now i mean we have all lady show tonight but we like racked in like what eight ladies that are in town yeah <laughs> but then even it's like figuring it out and then like getting through all i don't know i, get... I found a contest um you found Thank a contest you. yeah i found a contest at new york comedy club and it said um 
pay ten dollars and win fifty if Ooh. you win the contest. Yeah. And I was like, I need fifty dollars because remember, I was down on my luck. I need an extra <laughs> so, bag. <laughs> so no, I was trying not it's to good. do the bags right. anymore because I had over. actually gone to an open mic when I was uh, high. And one of the comics came and yelled at me like an older guy comic. And they he could was tell. like, you want to fucking waste our time? Yeah. You don't want to waste your time? You want to waste our time? You know how many people wow. fucking die from this shit? Because I was just like, wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> what kind of comedy yeah. is that? And so he yelled the fucking, and that's what it was. It was more guys looking out for their that's craft. Mean. Yeah. Well, yeah, back the, then, the, you know, it wasn't like, just make your paper. Like I met Steve Harvey and I didn't like him because when a young black comedian went up to him and, and tried to talk to him about the business, he was like, just make your paper, young, young blood, just make your paper. Oh. And I was like, ew, ew. Yeah, well, that's what that's, he's all about. I know. Yeah. And you can see it and everything, and but I was coming own, from, yeah, you know, Patrice and Rick and like these guys that were like, so like it was, Rick would get on stage and he'd get into fights with people about stuff, like with audience members. He'd be like, are you fucking raw? Because he hated the WB frog. That was like oh, one of his big issues. <laughs> fucking, hello, my mommy. Hello, my daddy. Like he was like, are you kidding? He's like, no black people should ever watch the WB. And of course, this whole table of black funny. people was like, hey, man, we like this. And he was like, you fucking not. Like it was, he was out of his mind. <laughs> he would fight with people about, you know, everything that he <laughs> felt was important. So, yeah, so I went up, I, I found a contest at yes. New York Comedy Club, and it was called the Best Amateur African American Comedy Contest. And I was like, well, I mean, <laughs> I'll try. I, I know a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I'll just go, I'll just go. Yeah, as long as and you didn't get any face paint out, you're oh, good. God, yeah. oh, that's never been a, a thing. No. But I, I know white people are so weird. I'm like, who the fuck white people? Um, <laughs> Why do they want to do so that? So strange. Like, mm. I'm Antoine Dodson. Just wear the bandana. Yeah. And we get it. <laughs> Oh my God. Um, so, uh, I went over to the contest and I was the only white person in the whole club. The club was sold out for this show. It was a very big deal at this show. It was a late night show as most black uh, shows were. Mm -hmm. They always keep it really late. They always keep it like on a Sunday. It's mm -hmm. always like, and yet as a couple guys I was listening to recently talk about black clubs coming up in the nineties and stuff, like Bruce Bruce was saying, we would sell out on a Tuesday mm -hmm. and they wouldn't give us the fucking Friday. Really? You know, and it was really disrespected. It was wow. very, very disrespected. And let me say this too: there wasn't the uh, Asian night, this Mexican night, the funniest mom. There mm -hmm. wasn't any of that shit. It was just everybody kind mm -hmm. of together, which I prefer. Mm -hmm. I have to say, I prefer that. I feel like when you're, it gets a little pandery, you know, oh, yeah, when yeah. you're just with one. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, so I went, and I was like, I don't know, and I, I. I wasn't anything except just a little nervous to do the material that I had written because I was like, I don't know if this works. And it was all character driven. I was never talking really in my real voice. It was always nice. like, I got up on stage and pretended to be a black man. <laughs> I, this would never, very canceled, very canceled. <laughs> So canceled oh, now, yeah. but like I, I, this, I but... would run up and be like, "What's up?" and like have my hand on my pussy and just be like, "What's up? What's up? What's up, y'all?" And uh, excuse me, Angel. Speaking of condoms, I would <laughs> talk about condoms. Like, yeah. Oh. And this is how long ago it was. When did this song come out? I like it raw, baby. I like it raw. <laughs> That's '96, I think. Uh, so that was my first time, and uh, I won. I won the contest because yes. people were like, "What yes. is this?" They're taking it back in a good way. That's I think so. Awesome. Well, and you're hilarious. And then helped. it was very nice because the, the community uh, enveloped me and, and was very kind. And a lot of the comics who saw that I was actually working really hard and showing mm -hmm. up would invite me to other shows. So I got to do a lot of shows and what they call the, the Chitlin Circuit of New York and um, the East Coast. <laughs> That's what they called it. That's right. So it was through that contest that you got into the more the black rooms and that, that scene. And mm -hmm. That's so awesome. And then you were on Dove Comedy Jam. I was. Right? After a year of just doing I see you. Yeah. Oh what, my what year was this it's amazing 96 wow mm -hmm. fuck because mm -hmm. uh but my buddy of mine six i think you know six. Oh yeah he does the book yeah book six. um he's got video cassettes from that from the the um oh. deaf comedy jam well i That's... don't know if i'm included on it because they know. didn't show my set on the tv really mm -hmm. wow mm -hmm. yeah i didn't they I told me that they... i found yeah. some other stuff of you online but i like yeah i know they told me that they didn't know what to do with me. Oh, that's hilarious. They told me that I should get braids and wear fubu. And oh. I, so I said, hell no. Dude, nope. I will never do that. And I will never pander to anybody. And also, they shot Def Jam in L.A., 
Whereas mm-hmm. I'd been doing comedy for one year, but one year every almost every night out, and I was going to Long Island, I was going to Jersey, I was going to the Bronx, Brooklyn. I was doing like I remember one time we got paid in chicken at this YMCA in yes. Brooklyn, Flatbush, Brooklyn. We got paid in chicken, and I remember I'll never forget. Talent was my um, MC. Talent, he's a great guy from uh, New York. And after my set, he comes out. He goes, "Give it up for the white girl." I think that white girl be running this chicken out to the back if we was in. Slave days right now give it up yeah. for this and i was like oh like i just love. felt like mama do you hear it mama yes. I love so it's really all for my mom <laughs> so back then were there a lot of comics that were on Def comedy jam that just got like they recorded their shit and then never and then never got shown like greer barnes was my yeah. year and he didn't hmm. get shown right. the only guy from our night was craig robinson that got oh. shown the only oh, guy that was, your night? Wow. that was our night cedric the entertainer was our host and the only guy that made it up was was Craig, mm-hmm. and he was the last one. We'd all died terrible deaths on stage. It was terrible. I mean, I had the best time. There's pic- I have stills from it that randomly, I was at a party months later in New York City, and this woman came up to me, and she goes, excuse me, are you a comedian? And I said, yeah, I am. Well, what's and I'd only been doing it a year, so I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And she goes were you on Deaf Comedy Jam in Los Angeles? And I said, yes, I was. Yes, I was. And she goes, I was the, I'm working in the editing room for the photographer at HBO. We have stills of you from that show. Would you like them? And I was like, are you kidding me? Because the guy who was my like management Mm -hmm. guy, he was the guy that wanted me to do FUBU and and all that. And he's like, well, then I don't know what to tell you, girl. I don't know what to tell you. And I was like, you don't know what to tell me? You were like up my ass. So you had a black manager? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It was a. Uh, it yes. was um. It was um. Bob um. I can't even remember his last name. He's a Def Jam guy. He's like they would all know him if I. Bob Sumner. Okay. Bob Sumner. So Bob Sumner, Stan Latham, um, oh. Russell Simmons. Oh, yeah. Latham they all is came still up. Name. To, yeah, they all came up to me after <laughs> at the Def Jam, and they were like, "Oh my God!" And I go, "Yeah, yeah, right, right." And they were, and then Russell just walked right up to me and he hugged me and he goes, "Girl, you are brave." Aww. And I was like, but am I funny? Like, I was like, I was right. killing in the Bronx and in Brooklyn <laughs> and all these places. But then I'm here in, in L.A., in Beverly Hills, right. they decided to shoot it. And one of the bits that I had was fighting, uh, girls fighting. And it was black girl fighting. And, you know, she took out her hair. She took out her contacts. She took out her fronts. She fucking got her purse. She got her Vaseline. <laughs> she put her fucking Vaseline on. And these motherfuckers yeah. had no idea what I was doing. Uh, right. We're in the Bronx. They're like, she got the Vaseline. Like, people were screaming they at got me. You know? in Beverly like, Hills. Yeah, Beverly Hills is like, mm, I don't know. Is she putting on her contact? Like, yeah. what's happening right now? Is this powder? Makeup? What are we doing? Yeah. Setting? So, it was, you know, I mean. Especially back then. Nobody, like. No. White people were so, like, as far as, like, they didn't, they didn't understand what was going on at all in yeah. the ghetto. At all. And. It just wasn't as diverse. Like, Mm-mm. for me, growing we didn't up. Have the social media. Right. Well, I was going to say, yeah. social media, Nobody's... now they think that everything. I had some joke I was trying to do, but it always made people sadder the two times I tried, where it was like, before <laughs> social media, like, everybody didn't know each other's culture. Like, you know, we thought, like, the Dutch people just had clogs and whatever, and that all, like, black people in Africa had, like, Sally Struthers, like, you know, the fly. Yeah, we and never for thought that there was white people. As a, like, yeah, like, nobody thought that there were white people in Africa. It's like, everybody in Africa is poor and needs Sally Struthers to help them. And, like, now it's like, okay, cool. Social media is good in that way is that it kind of gives culture to the rest of the world in a sense of, like, making it smaller how, how about, sometimes. How about, <laughs> how about this? How about we all ask each other questions? And then mm-hmm. we travel a little and get out of our yeah. own little area that we're fucking familiar oh, with. And we go, oh, look at this. What is this? I mean, <laughs> it's, it's really b- bizarre to me how, I think, how simple it is to really get to understand other people and go to and even you're really stuck city. in their bu- bubbles yeah even in your own city they get stuck in their bubbles you've never been at i know people who, like never even left the state really and yeah like, i know what? people in la they've never been to the beach like, the kids i knew in the city they've never get, been to the beach the kids i knew at the beach never been to the city yeah sometimes it's money and traveling whatever but we were like poor and little we had a vw van and they're like just load all the kids in the vw and we're going out to mexico and california we'll eat burritos like of beans and my tortillas my mom made throw it also go get on the bus and go to fucking coors avenue like i was when i first moved here when i first moved i didn't have a car so i just got on the bus Mm -hmm. and i was like this will take me somewhere i'll fucking figure it out and then people were like where did you take the bus and i was like (laughs) i was up on uh i don't know louisiana and some shit and they were like don't ever go to louisiana and i was like look people were looking at me weird but 
I'm a white lady. Everyone's scared of me. Yeah. Unless there's a white man no, near true. me, I'm the scariest motherfucker in the room. So I don't, I'm, don't get it twisted. Because yeah, number one, they think you're fucking nuts because you're in that area. I think that, and yeah. I, and that maybe I'm a cop. I mean, here's the thing. Look, uh, we can lie about it. I have a joke about it. White people hate it. I'm going to do it right now. White people yeah. hate this joke. I go, hey, you guys, uh, I'm going to ask you right now. Who do you think scared, more scared walking down the street towards each other at night? Uh, a black guy walking towards a white girl or a white girl walking towards a black guy? And I, and if there's black people, which there usually are because I don't like to do it in a room of white people. <laughs> I go, black people, shh, don't say. Yeah. <laughs> and then I go, it is the black man. Black mm-hmm. man, much more scared than mm-hmm. us. And, and what, what are you talking about? Because we can say anything. Yeah, and you're heard, and unfortunately. Heard All they have to do is say that, that was, yeah. call the police. Yeah, like. yeah whether it's I true am, or not. I am the scariest motherfucker in this country unless there's a white man next mm-hmm. to me. And and that's just truth. And for, for the white chicks who don't get that, who don't know that, who don't see that, who don't understand the culture... I even get that. I'm not white because I have this face because I look white. I know, you know... That's back in being those communities. And also just going to those neighborhoods looking like the way I do. They're like, she's not, we'll leave her alone. She's lost her. <laughs> but I, I don't know, growing up, I, well, my friend there, I recognize my friend Mike from high school. He said, boo boo, haha. In high school, I looked very <laughs> pretty similar to what I do now, but I hung out with a lot of like the black and Mexican communities in town because they were just made me feel more like family and like I was whatever. But they, I was never changed myself. I still looked like kind of like a skater look, looking kid. Right, I had black hair and whatever. But I had so braids. many like white girls in my high school that were doing the braids. All of a sudden started talking and embonics like real heavy. Like, you know, whatever. And like just totally trying to do that. I prefer calling it a black scent. The Maybe. black scent. Having a black scent or a, a Mexican... Spanglish. Spanglish. Some Spanglish. And just doing that. I'm like, why do you seem white? Like, they were over trying it and then going home to their suburban parents. But it was... They were they Gwen saw it as like, Yeah, and they saw it as like almost I know like who a, made that happen. Gwen Stefani. And there was always like an air of like, I'm cool because I'm a white girl who can hang out in this scene with some of them. And then some it was just like this is who these are our people and they're just like our friends, you know. So it was like always that like weird balance of like the ones who are like, Yeah, I'm like a hot commodity because I'm white in the brown scenes. So I'm like, oh just be a person. Let's all be friends. I like to think that we are the thing that you can get back at the white man for. Take me, sir. <laughs> Take me. I am here for you. I am here. I am here for the brown man to get back at the white man. I am here for that. I'm I love so, it. I may be one of the, the exotic whites that Josh Fournier talks about. You are an exotic white. I for am. Sure. I am. And you're bridging gaps. Look at you. From L.A. to New about York time. to Albuquerque. I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, yeah. yeah. Talk about it. Okay. Wait, so know. we're at 721. We got a little bit of time. We said, you have this such a, a rad story. This is longer. See, she said an hour. This is longer than an hour. I know, hour. but you're so, yeah. you're so awesome. Are we fine? Thanks. We just have to be there by like 8-ish, 30, I don't know. 8-30? The show's not till 9 o'clock. That's right. Did right. you want a burger and a soda before you get your show? That's it. Free, free <laughs> chicken, <laughs> please. Free chicken, Free um, chicken. So, okay, so you were out there, and then did you you went back to L.A. for a I while. I did. I right? went back about five years ago. I went back because really? I had a boyfriend die. Oh, goodness. Charm. And, and drugs are bad, in, kids. In New York. And then were you acting out there, though? Or, I was acting out so there. So you've already started acting with the agent. I didn't know mm-hmm. if you had started that once you... Because, yes, yeah, she's also an actress. I've been acting and since I'm a child. I pretended I like those fuckers. No, I've been, <laughs> I have been acting, actually, for a long time. Uh, not really... I didn't try to, but I've been... I get asked to do a lot of like, really that. serious... I get cast in the most... I've died on screen a couple times. I've fucking... I've like, my baby, my baby! Yeah. You know, like shit like that. Oh, yeah. I saw some clip where you like, <laughs> had like a fake gun in your mouth oh, yeah. and things. And then... That was a big one. Uh, you were in Law and Order, weren't you? Yes, at Law and uh-huh. Order. A nurse. I was a Russian nurse. Yeah. Trying to get a hold of her husband. So yeah, that's something you just fell into. That wasn't something that... Comedy come, was your first love, or do you also love them both? Or is like... Do you think feel like my acting is like a caveat to get... Really? My mom was an actor. That's how I got into it. So my mom was, and this is going way back, kids. Larry, you ready? She was a regular for about maybe three months or four months on Hill Street Blues. Hill Street Blues. Going way back. Taking it way back. That's way back. That's like one of the first comp comp dramas. And it won a lot of fucking awards. I forgot that name. Steven Bochco's first. On the TV. uh, Yeah. That's so bad. Yeah. And I was a punk rocker because it was the 80s. And I was punk rock and I was looking all weird. And they were like, hey, what color is your kid's hair today? And she's all green. And they're like, bring her in. So anytime she would get a day on set, 
I if there was a kid that was working on set as well as they had the school there, I would get to come. So that's how I got my SAG card was being arrested Kool-Aid? in the background. Bad, huh? Did, did you use Kool Aid to color your hair? That's what we used. No. Oh. We had Kool-Aid manic is. panic in um, Melrose. Out, you know, I lived on oh. Melrose, so it was like manic panic was, was very. That's very Kool Aid wasn't. Yeah, they used to Food manic. coloring. I heard manic panic was later. Yeah. Yeah, we had manic panic. I just bought See some you. manic panic for my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I love how everything's full circle, you guys. <laughs> oh, my God. It's a SAG yeah. card as a kid then, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, I got my SAG card as a oh. kid. So as a teenager, I got this SAG card. So I was able to, like, work whenever people... And, and you know, be, my mom being an actor, I was kind of around a lot of people who were, like, making things and casting things. And she was in a Playwrights Festival every summer that I she would drag me to. And it, and now that I'm older, I'm like, oh, my God, I was with, like, Sam Shepard and Irene wow. Fornes and, like, these amazing playwrights that were just kind of experimenting and teaching kids at, at, at uh, Claremont College for the summer if they wanted to learn how to playwright but then I was put in plays like when I was a kid so it was I was always kind of around it That's but right. I wasn't a get I wasn't a go-getter I was I was a real shy kid like I don't and honestly I don't really even this is this is where I like to be this is this uh, on stage mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. I don't I don't invite, invite me to a party and be very disappointed <laughs> Yeah, it's happened numerous times, numerous times. Like, yeah, people yeah. are like, she's amazing. We want you to come to the thing. And I'm like, okay. And then I'm like, oh. <laughs> anxiety attack. Well, most people don't know that comedians are introverts. A lot of times, yeah. yeah. Even I. full blown introverts. Yeah. Like, I, I can be scared. pretty social out in the world, and I can whatever, but then people get weird when I, like, don't want to come out of the house. I'm like, I need, like, a day or two where I, like, don't really do much or talk to people, or at least one. Like, I was kind of yeah, nice I, in my I car. I have to literally bug her to text me back. <laughs> She's not a great texter. No. I, family? How do you feel? Call me it's a lot better of calling. All of us well, that get the texting like, back. People at yeah. age, you think I'm bad? You don't call people you think this I'm age. I'm bad? No, you don't. My you, sister you Sarah is way worse. Right. Sarah's worse. Marisa's worse. Uh, anyway, I'm calling them out because we're just bad at it. I just, I would rather talk on the phone for like, like I like when we talk for like 20 minutes on the phone. Cool, get things done. Because the TD is going back and forth and like maybe I'm dry and I drive a lot well, for that's work. The way I am too, but I figured since you were the young, yeah, part no, of the young crew, I'm yeah. a caller and I also drive a lot. Like I'm constantly driving, so like I don't want to really be texting and driving. You shouldn't be even talking um, and driving. Yeah, well, no, because you're talking, you can get it over quickly and texting is like they send you one thing and then you're like five minutes later and then it's like, and I'm like, I'm doing deliveries right now and I don't want to be doing that. So if I have a break in parking lot, like let's talk for a second or something. But yeah, I am bad about say, it. On that Facebook, I need your code. 20 minutes later. <laughs> no, no code. I was dealing it's with expired. the I'm just fucking I know, I'm the worst. It's, yeah, I'm trying to get back onto social now media. you're on your phone. I, well, second, no, folks. I'm seeing but no, um, I was making sure the code went. Cause I'm like, <laughs> We don't need the code I can't anymore. wait till the grid goes down. So I know I'm I hope alone. it does. Oh, you no, I hope it does. I've oh, had, I've had. I fucking can't. Wait. I have had like dreams, recurring dreams since I was little about like there being like the apocalypse be more like a tech thing that just like stops and, and it everybody will be. like be was no relying water on it. and there'll be no grid. Yeah. no grid, no water. I get really happy when I don't have my phone. And I don't have to do even today. Like my truck was broken. I was like, I don't have to like. Drive. Oh, yesterday I was like, I don't have to drive anywhere, be anywhere today. Or, or when I'm on an airplane, love traveling, love airplanes, airports, cars, driving, because you don't have to be anywhere else and nobody can really bother you. Can I? But I love being on the stage something. and I love things, so it's like really hard. I yeah. would love to suggest something to you, my friend, yes. Carla V. Uh, you're in charge of your life. You're in charge of your minutes, I your know. moments, your texts. But your, I have to text you, them back. Yes, but the priority, he is a priority. Yeah, he's we're a sitting at home not having to drive and having yeah. me come pick you up. So I don't understand why you didn't text him back. But, you know, that's your prerogative. <laughs> oh, good he God. All I'm post. saying is they're, yeah. they're, they're, you're, the day has a certain amount of hours. Yeah. We have to figure out how many hours we're going to let other people run, right. them, rule them. But if you're on top of your thing and you go, hey, man, it's Tuesday or what the fuck day is it? It's Wednesday. I'm going to text you all my shit before I come and I'll see you in an hour. Mm-hmm. Boom. And then you everybody else, I'm working. I got my show. I'm working. I got my show. I just feel like I let people down, or or oh. I'm not going to progress don't if you I be don't. Codependent next to me. Oh, dude, I oh. have issues. We will do therapy right I'm now. Going I will... there. That is one thing I've been working on, and I didn't even realize yes. I was that codependent though. None of, of like, us do. None of us. I thought do. codependency was about like, oh, I need you. No, I don't even need that many friends mm-hmm. or people or a boyfriend. But when somebody's in my life, I'm like, I will drop everything for them, and it's not good because I. It's not good. I mean, that's why I'm 35 and it's not healthy. Like, 
you know, still a child because I've just like dropped shit for relationships or dropped shit for whatever and then been like, oh, wait, what do I want? So I think comedy, part of comedy I love is because it is putting me first in a way, you know. Yes, I mean, I have very to. much. And um, this show, this yes, is a priority. Is, you get to do the yes. show. And this it's is really important. nice. I love all that stuff. And then when I get to the point where I'm like, I feel so busy, I'm like, don't feel the stress about the comedy. It's not comedy or any of the comedy world. It's me, yeah, having mismanage my stress and anxiety but I just live on like an anxiety world half the time even if I'm not trying to and I'm way I'm 10 uh, 20 30 40 50 What's times happening right now? more I'm way less anxious than I was like 10 years ago that's what I'm saying so it's going through it so I seem very calm all the time but my brain's always just like you do not seem calm all the time is that okay to say no, <laughs> I'm an honest I'm friend not, no you, you don't are seem calm all the time I am that's what edge. I'm saying we can we can manage this, not me and you, no, but yeah. you know, we as people, we can manage these things. I am also very, very scared of letting people down, but you know what yes. I won't do? Bend over backwards for anybody. And you know what else I won't do? Say, oh, I was just trying to be nice when someone fucks me over, because they will if you're just trying to be nice. That's Here's the thing, way. you're already nice. You don't have to try to be nice. This is oh, just I more like of me that. yelling at Carla now. I know, I like that. But you know what? It's true, girl. It's you're, fucking true. I, I've never heard it put that way, that and you're already nice. You don't have to. Because I feel like sometimes I ha I'm like, I have to try to be. She is therapizing the shit out of me right now, dude. I'm loving this. A bitch this. went to Jungian. A bitch dude, went to Jungian. Fuck it. Oh, and then I dealt with really? my Jungian shit. Yeah, I write that down my badass. dreams. Are you kidding me, guys? Morning oh, no, pages, dream anybody, person. the I, artist's way. Come on. I wake up and journal and stuff every That's morning and talk about my stuff before I talk to people. I do do that. But I do put aside a time. Yeah, I need to get rid of this codependency of like other people. Like, no. listen, man, it's a, it's a it's a major theme this week. I'm going to say it this week. I've had men and women call me and talk to me. Call me. That's right. They mm -hmm. talk and talk to me about how they didn't realize code. Because I'm like, yo, that sounds pretty codependent. And my one friend, who's a male friend, he said, I don't. I'm not codependent. I go, well, what you just yeah. said to me was, you're worried about someone else's happiness. And it doesn't have anything to do with, they don't have anything to yes. do with you. And you've done everything you can to be as good as you can. You better let that shit go, bro. Or else I'm going to call you codependent again. Mm, watch me. I love <laughs> I'll fucking I love do it. This. I'll call everybody. Fucking this is why I you mean. only recognize it because it's so real for you. Like, yeah. you know, it's real for me. So I'm like, yeah, you grew up in a fucking household where it's like, you know, maybe not everybody had the trauma that I have, but everybody has trauma. Everybody does. Nobody gets mm -hmm. away from shit. Mm -hmm. So whatever you have, you got to fucking do it. It's your responsibility. For sure. Yeah. And I saw me mom be that way I think mm -hmm. in her whole life so I was like this mm -hmm. is just how we are yeah it's and then yeah it, she was just like love. a lay down layer and like a doormat and the thing is she was the biggest heart ever but like definitely put aside things or her even her own emotions and how big are her resentments now well, they're balloon size. Yeah. They're dead. <laughs> they're dead. But, but you know, know. same with my mom. But she's so dead. resentful. She hated everybody. Yeah. Oh, God, that fucking bitch. I'm like, Mom, what, what's the problem? Like, my mom would say stuff to me like, well, I'd say, oh, what are you doing for your birthday, Ma? And she'd go, well, uh, Sandra's taking me to lunch. And I'm like, that's great. Sandra's taking me to lunch. That's fucking great. Happy birthday. What a blast. I don't know. Oh, like, really? You don't know? Obligated. I think that's just being Jewish. <laughs> I mean, she got a nose job and changed her name, swears she's not she's Jewish. She wants to talk to me about my shit every day. I'm like, you're a Jew, bitch. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's Still a Jewish. Mm -hmm. But but it was just a very, like, controlling and codependent. And then mm -hmm. everything was like, I don't I don't care for that much. I'm like, you don't care for being taken out to lunch for your fucking birthday? Just calm right. down. So it <laughs> is a hard thing to realize that. Uh, maybe you get angrier when you do shit that you don't want to do. I get, uh... Not you, personally. Yeah, yeah, no, I get, yeah, it brings one. out a secondary emotions, and then you're like, mm. and then the phone thing, I, I now will sleep with my phone ringer off, because right before, like, hmm. Should have it in another room, Bubba. Well, I sleep with, like, off, off, but I have, like, white noise, because they're all saying, like, whatever. It's a whole thing. So I sleep with white noise. I have white noise. Yeah, I have to have yeah. white noise. Um, We're all very traumatized yeah. children. But I, don't I sleep with, that. like, the ringers yeah. off and stuff, because for a while I did, like, foster care, so I was 24-7 house manager on call. So it was a kid stuck a piece of something up their nose, another kid ran away, another kid had sex with their boyfriend on the two. You know, like, whatever it was, 24-7 on call. And then I went from that to my mom. Oh no, before that I was like, my mom had passed, so it was always like things like that. Oh, in the middle of the night. And then I had done uh, old folks like Alzheimer's, dementia, like administration for those and basically running three houses. So my phone 24 7 was going off. And now I'm just like, and I'm like, no, it's good things, it's comedy. So it's like, I have to remember, I like I have to get rid of that. Like, I hate the word PTSD, but it is like a PTSD for my phone of like having people just need so much for me all the time and be like, ah. I'm going to say another like thing that you may not agree with, but I, no, I, see me. I feel this is very important to hear. I'm excited. It's your ego. Okay? It's a little. It's a lot. 
a it? lot, a lot. All ego. Um, if I was there, they'd be fine. If I answered the phone, oh. they'd be okay. If I showed up, they'd everything be fine. If I was there, it'd be okay. If, if, if I took care of it, I know how to take care of that. No one else knows how to take care of it, me. Oh, you gotta settle down, boo boo girl. Thing. Yeah, that's ego, it is, control. Yeah, it's a bunch um, of stuff, but yeah. it's, it's not to beat yourself up for it. It's no, to see it's it come learning. up and go, oh yeah, I can't control that shit. Doesn't matter if I'm with him or not with him. He's gonna do yeah. meth. <laughs> it's me talking out loud to myself. No, I love this. Is like, this the next boyfriend, boyfriend you're talking about? Yes, 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 Larry. Yes, would things out loud with me. I love yes. it. But it really is. I know I like hearing these things, especially from people who are around me in different capacities, like yourself. Well, it's it's just what it is. It's how it how I also speak about mm -hmm. my own self. I'm like, anytime I think, oh. I should call him. I just had a very big lesson about the ex-boyfriend, the meth uh, smoker. He, uh, I hadn't talked to him for a while and it was a while. And I, and I was thinking my ego was going, Oh, he's probably dead. I mean, he, you don't, you're not right. taking care of him. He's probably dead. Well, the guy fucking calls me and he's like, Oh, he got like money from people. He's got hotel rooms and a job at a pawn shop. You know what? Who the fuck am I? I'm just some lady in Albuquerque. He was like, what am I doing with my life? Maybe I should concentrate on this man. Like, no, mm. no. Focus back. Focus back. It's not selfish to think about yourself, friends. It's, I almost, not focus. it's not fucking selfish. I almost gave my ex closure that he needed, but fucking, you cheat on me with three other people who you're dating. Closure? No, you mean a fuck? No, there was... <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why he was... He's like, I'm sorry, yeah. whatever. And he's like, can we meet and smoke? And in my head, I'm like, maybe he... This is the codependent, the uh, fucked up Carla part of me and the like ego part is like, maybe for the, you know, this will help his life get better and he'll be better to the next person. He, he needs this. I'm like, no, I'm fucking, cause it's going to drain me. He mm -hmm. hurt me. Mm -hmm. He never apologized really to me. So why am I giving that motherfucker closure? So that's like, exactly. that's like, I am a little prouder. And my friends Very are like, have you texted him back? I'm like, I don't text that dude back. Like, no, he's dead to me. <laughs> I mean, that's how you deal. That's fine. Bit, but as yeah. long as you're not doing shit that you don't want to do, we all end up doing shit that we don't want to do sometimes, right? It's just mm -hmm. human. We want to be kind. We want to be liked. We want to be loved. We want. That's why basically is fucking in this goddamn vernacular right now. I will kill oh, yeah. everyone who uses that fucking word. I, hope I, didn't I use fucking it hate that goddamn word. No, I just, because I would have called you I, out on it. Because I, I, I see your. Oh, I hate basically oh, and, and literally, literally and literally. Yeah, but literally. Guess what? But, it's, hyperbole but if you look at it from love this is what my practice is this is, guys it's a practice um if you look at it from love here's what i thought okay literally means whenever someone says literally to you they want you to know that they are trying really hard to give you the clearest most poignant story right fact okay. yeah, literally. i literally took them to the beach Bitch, I didn't need that extra word. Okay, so then now there's basically, right? So basically, I think has become this thing where people don't want you to think that they're going to take a long time. Because God knows our fucking brains are like, huh, 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 huh. you know, like I can do the boring, 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 That's boring. That's why I talk like, so oh my fast. God. Sometimes I'm like, like, I only have this much of their time. No, <gasps> yeah. especially as Basically, a comedian, yeah. especially as a comedian, you have to learn how to slow down. It's yeah. all the timing. It has helped me slow, slow down. You should have seen me when I first started. I was just running over yeah. all of my stuff. And now... I speak slower on stages than here, probably. Unless it's a quick whatever. But yeah, I had to because the timing, you're just going to well, not get anywhere in comedy. give the audience a break. Like, yeah. give them a break. Sometimes them... you have to give the audience time well, to catch up well, and to figure they it out. Yeah. The they joke. didn't write it, so they haven't been saying, yeah, they need to process right. it because they're not the ones who wrote it. They need to do the math. And I have a lot of jokes where I need to stop. Mm -hmm. People. It's very smart That's stuff that I do out there. No, but so I really we think do. that basically is another thing where people are just like, look, I'm only going to take a second of your time mm -hmm. because they're so worried that we're going to be like, is this a long story? Yeah. Like, is it a well, long story well, short? I, you know, and it's like, I don't know. I don't need the extra mm -hmm. words, man. I don't need you to be nervous about talking to me either. Just tell me the fucking story. And if I tell you I don't think it's going anywhere, guess what? I'm going to fucking say something. I am so not an editor of like, <laughs> so I'll just like wait you. for the, uh -huh. and I'm like, what are we doing here? Where, mm -hmm. What are you saying to me? Please get it out. Please mm -hmm. tell me the, is this a joke? Is this a story? If there's a story, then you got to give me something to go for. <laughs> there's a fucking killing me. Like, I cannot, <laughs> I'm like a real life person, you know? Yeah. I'm like a real life person. You help me when my brain farts. I'm like, uh, and then you're like, wait, I'm like, thank you. You're Drag my back. <laughs> Just like right now, I need you to do it. We have. What are we talking about, same, Carla? <laughs> we have a lot of the same stuff. I think everyone does. It's very hard. 
life's like being a human. Yeah. So we we're talking comedy. We just have to relate. We're all going through we a lot of the same stuff in different Dave ways. Sh- we, we talked about, I watched the Dave Chappelle, Mark Twain uh, thing last mm-hmm. night, the honoring of him. And he talks a lot about being a comedian and being an important part of society because we are the ones that need to speak on shit that is happening and get people thinking about stuff and get people talking about stuff. I mean, my God, when mm-hmm. he did the, all this stuff, I mean, he has a thing with uh trans people right and oh, yeah. but he talks about having a thing he yeah had a trans yeah. person like back his all of his shit up like, right yeah he's he doesn't fucking funny <laughs> yeah he's not and out there it, acting like he doesn't have a thing with it like he's but if it's that's funny joke. yeah we should be able you know how many mm-hmm. you know how many rape jokes i've sat through in los angeles not in new york they're much oh, especially smarter. during the fucking 80s and 90s shit <laughs> Well, I wasn't doing comedy then, but but there was a lot of like just now, just now, just now, a lot of white guys who want to talk about rape and uh, how funny it is, and I will laugh if it's a funny it's joke, funny, yeah. but I'm I'm I've yelled out nope, yeah. <laughs> people, I don't give a fuck, nope. That. But then, I don't okay. fucking care. But then do you think that they should be able to finish their jokes? Because I've been at open mics and a guy just says the word rape and gets thrown off the stage. No, you have to do the Let joke. Let them finish the, joke, the joke, right? Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Once Thank you. you. It's a comedy. Yeah, it's a yes. comedy. Because yeah. I've, yeah, seen I'm like, just let, I mean, I'm not a fan of ring, but you know, <laughs> we, none of us, like, let him finish well, What was it. he like? Well, <laughs> hey, good, good evening, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Rape. Yeah. Like, what did he say? What did he do? I can't imagine someone just getting up there. Well, for my next act, I'd like no. to talk about raping. <laughs> you guys down with that? Just, like, how do you introduce We that? just have a, people. Well, no, he just got thrown out because he was saying something, something, and this time, and the Me Too, and the rape, and then they, the host heard that, and he's like, you're done. He's like, I didn't even finish my joke, though. You're done. Go. Uh, like, because they brought him like, wait, like, can we at least let him? Can we decide if he's funny at least and then kick him out maybe? Yeah, like, he get, like if it's bad, he'll get his ass kicked out yeah, for the show. Yeah, okay. yeah shit. exactly. Mm-hmm. It's fun times. Me too is so personal. Basically is so essay, my sister Geneva said. Oh, yeah? Basically. Basically. Listen, Basically. it's because I'm fucking high on dust, I say. You've got to <laughs> fucking realize it's going to go by quick. <laughs> Basically, thing. fucking Smiley told me. I can't go out on Friday. I see we got a call back for Pepsi, Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> there were all these essays I knew that were actors in LA. Like, oh yeah, I can go drive somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I had an alarm come up. Uh, so okay, so we're back in New York. You then went to LA, five years. Yeah. And then you decide during the pandemic to move here. Yeah, yeah. I had friends. Uh, I didn't know one person. <laughs> Yeah, you came like did, you'd visited once. Before, I came right? in September on the train. I took the Amtrak and I um, stayed in Airbnb in Barnella, Bar, uh, Barnelia. Barnelia, yeah. Barrelas? No, Barrelas. Barrelas neighborhood by oh, the river. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, my, yeah, near my neighborhood. Near your neighborhood, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god. I mean, first of all, I was living in Hollywood, which was just disgust. I mean, it's so disgusting mm-hmm. there right now. The homeless is out of control, mm-hmm. and the drugs are out of control. So. It's scary. Like, I never used to be scared to walk around in L.A. I mean, it's a little scary, but but this is really bad, like, escape from L.A. So, so it was easy for me to leave. But I, I got here, and then I was just, I you know, I didn't rent a car or anything because I didn't have a car in L.A. So I was like, let me see what it feels like to be here just on the bus and walking around like how I do. And so I was just, like, walking around, and I was talking to people, and, like, I was blown fucking away. Like, everyone looked me in the eye, mm-hmm. and everyone talked to me. Like, even, like, 20-something-year-old boys on the bus where I was like, hey, you guys, we're, I'm thinking about moving over here. This neighborhood looks cute. Like, what's up? And they're like, you should totally move. Okay. I was very suspicious of this city because I'm like, <laughs> they're too nice. who the fuck is this nice? Like, I've never, I've only lived in New York and L.A. Whereas if you tell someone you're living, show. you're going to move happening. to mm-hmm. New York, they're like, New York? You fucking crazy. You think you can handle it there? You think you can yeah. handle it? And then LA, LA, you got a job, you got an agent, you got mm-hmm. movie people, you got blah, blah, blah. So it's always like all these pretenses for where I've lived. And then I came here and I was like, I'm thinking about moving here. And everybody I said that to was like, you should. And I was like, I'll burn this place. You probably have more acting jobs here than you do in You're LA. Like, well, that's for sure. uh... well, that's what you would think. You would think, but it's <clears throat> it's not the same. They don't have the, um, your guys' legislation is a, uh, Tax breaks for crew and background only. So no SAG actors. 
and I'm principal, yo. I done my background shit. Mm-hmm. I did that shit. Like, I'm but with you now. Yeah, I had so a friend who told me uh, a black guy who was born in Tucum carries my best friend in LA, Baron Vaughn, very funny so comedian funny. actor. Yes. Uh, really talented uh, person. And he said to me, you know, you have never got, because we met in New York and then we stayed friends in LA and everything like that. So he's known me for like 20 plus years. And he's like, you know, you've never gotten the, the love that you deserve. Like I've never seen you get the love you deserve. He goes, I want you to go somewhere you get love. He goes, you should go to Albuquerque. And I was like, what? And I was like, everyone wants to be loved, right? Yeah. So I took, so I was, I was like, this is amazing. Everyone's speaking to me and looking me in the eye. And you know, I'm very attracted to non-white men. So I was like, oh my god, oh my god. And all the all the native men that I saw had like, because in LA everyone's got like a messy bun, like what's mm-hmm. up, you know. And here everyone's like high and tight, yeah. like all the ponytails were like sleek and like down the back. I was like, I'm gonna die. Yeah. And then I was like, they won't date me. I'm the devil and then um and then I went back to LA and I was like I think I'll move yeah and everyone was like what I was like I don't know I think I'll move it was pretty cute yeah everybody's good yeah LA is horrifying yeah but I like it here you know I like it and I like that people think it's crimey I'm like yeah stay away I know people do there was a shooting in my courtyard the first week that I lived here there was a shooting in my courtyard like the dude was all blah 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 like with a glock and I was like it's home I was like this is my place I love it here that's so funny and all the lowriders I was like what's that yeah, like I was freaking the out. Writers. And then, like, you see the, the highness, and I'm like, oh, sorry, miss. <laughs> I don't mean to be staring. Yeah, I'm get babes here. <laughs> They're so hot. Everyone's so gorgeous here. Like, all tatted up. Nobody thinks tattoos are weird. Like, it's, it's true. just, every, I mean, in I LA, like people it. don't think it's weird, but I definitely got different, like, treated different from mm-hmm. summer to winter like in the winter time oh hello miss hi and, you know and then in the summer they're like what's up whore you know I'm like hey. yeah <laughs> sorry <laughs> Ew. yeah it's very different I know people are like I'll be all covered up and then they see I have like a tattoo up here they're like you are Mexican like chest plate tattoo right yeah. above the boob I'm like yeah yeah that's where my so, mom got hers hey. yeah. it says breathe <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I was 18. That's <laughs> great. It's okay. Mine's a cover. This is a cover up. Eight, uh, I, got some, I got some pretty dumb ones. Yeah. yeah I have a couple, a couple of dumb ones. I got some black hearts. Anybody misspelled? So I'm misspelled. I have a misspelled uh, one. No. Ooh, wait. Nah. Mm-hmm. wait what's I've one? got your typical 90s tribals. Oh, you got a tribals? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tribal. Oh, tribal. Oh, you, have a, you guys can't see later. He has tribal around the elbow. I don't like, I'm a, like I was in prison, which it's I never was. No, impressive. but that was very trendy. It was, oh, a, was, it was trendy. a cool thing to do. And it was ouchy. It was an ouchy spot. Yeah, that spot's ouchy. What's your mission that? spelled on you? Uh, I have, well, it's all it's all really embarrassing, actually, oh, yeah. the tattoo. Uh, well, I no, did. My I was, head tattoo hurt the worst, though. The head? Yeah, because I have a oh, full oh, yeah. koi fish back here. Yeah. That hurt bad. I was going to mention my neck tattoo when we were talking about raves because I got it right before that rave scene happened and I wasn't into raving, but it's the cat in the hat. And mm-hmm. kids were like, fuck oh, yeah. Oh, I wasn't into raving. I was there for the drugs. Well, well yeah, yeah, but the, you remember Cat in the Hat? Everyone yeah, wore the hats. Like, oh, I yeah, even had some of those when I was like, like in kid. Airheads. Remember that movie? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those like felt ish yeah. yeah. hats. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, no. I just thought, oh, dear God. So, I did something here wrong. Cat in the Hat. But yeah. But the misspelled one is already really embarrassing on top of it being misspelled. So, okay, in New York, it was illegal to get tattooed in the 90s, in New York, because it had been illegal from the 50s. They had had no needles. Yeah, they were banned they, because of the, um, because of... Uh, hepatitis. 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 Yeah. That's where you, okay. Wow. And the sailors and the and the tattoo part, like, they shut everything down. And there was a big yeah. heroin problem. Like, there was all kinds of needle mm-hmm. issues. So they shut everything down. And so when I got to New York, I already had tattoos because I started when I was a teenager in L.A. And people were like, where'd you get those tattoos? Oh, my God. But then, because I was friends with people that would come into New York and do illegal tattooing, God. there were... Just... Back in the 80s and 90s, if you had a tattoo, you were basically black. Or, a lot of people thought I was in a gang, you're a gang or yeah. had been to prison. Well, mm-hmm. You're just a piece of shit. Yeah. Like, I... I mean, going through the border, going to Canada, forget about it. Oh, I got I pulled imagine. in every time. Yeah, because in order to get a tattoo, you had to go yeah. with some leaps and bounds or something, or I jail or something. They I thought. Mean, they thought. I was in legit parlors in L.A., you mm-hmm. know. I, I have a Mark Mahoney tattoo from him. What? I have, like, yeah, I have really Bob right. Vessels. I have, what? like, really good... Oh, I used to be really into tattoo magazines yeah. and things when I was collecting with the money for a while. Very good. Wow, that's rad. 
but the one the one that's misspelled is on my hip and I got it in a in an apartment in New York in the Lower East Side and this man called Mark Rude did it and he's dead now poor guy but he was great uh he uh it's a it's a heart with a banner through it and a dagger and a rose it's like all old tra traditional but the banner says um ladies love outlaws I what? know that is so Wait, fucking 90s dude Wait, so what's your <laughs> It's so embarrassing because then my weed dealer hit on me the other day and he's like, I like all your tattoos. And I was like, thanks, bro. And he's, I could have birthed him. He's young. And he goes, he goes, check this one out. And he pulls it up and it's like a gun, like tatted to his ribs and like all this Asian writing. And I go, wow, what's that? And he goes, it's, it says criminal. And I go, <laughs> I should probably get out of the car. Oh, yeah, so <laughs> funny. I fucking make out with my weed dealer. I can't. I can't. I've done that one too many times. I have to yeah. stop dating any of my dealers. That's that's my but... new rule. Um, no comics, no dealers. Yeah, no comics, no dealers, no magicians. No homeless. That's my problem. No. I haven't had that yet. I've had a guy sat next to because I did Kill Tony, you know that show oh, yes. in, in Hollywood. So I've done oh, that so show funny. a few times. Those yeah. guys, are, those guys are bullshit. But fucking awesome, uh, uh, I fucking killed show. it. I had a great time. I had a great. I've time. seen you on there once for sure. Thank I went back. You. And I was like, I haven't seen her because my friend came oh, to yeah, your, your show and she was like, she was like, he's like, this episode I was like, oh yeah, she was. I went back and watched it. It was a good time. Yeah, it was. It fun. was a good time. But uh, uh, I think I talked about dating homeless dudes and. I was out at a show randomly, just going to a friend's show to support. I'm in the audience. I'm sitting there just quietly. This boy comes up. He's like in his 20s, a white boy. And he's like, hey, uh, can I sit over? Uh, sure, come on, sit. So he sits and we're just chilling. And he keeps, I can feel him like keep on looking at me. And I'm like, so I finally look. I'm like, hey. And he goes, hey, hey, you were on Kill Tony, right? And I'm like, yeah. And I kind of like perk up. I'm like, yeah, I was. Oh, my God. What what episode did you see in any takes a minute and he goes hobo dick right hobo oh. dick <laughs> and i was so confused i was oh, like hobo I dick it. i don't know no that's not me and he goes yeah 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 you date homeless guys right oh, that's like, so funny. oh yeah that is me <gasps> sorry I'm hobo gonna... dick i guess i'll stay here for the rest of the show <laughs> we're friends now <laughs> so sad <laughs> Oh, that's so a good sad. thing to be known. It's like they're very good looking men. I don't know if you yeah. can look at a picture. I have pictures. I, I might of have. Mm, he was mildly homeless. I had sex with one. Mildly. Mildly. That got me sweaty. That I met him. On the street homeless? I met him in front of knockouts. <laughs> one used to sleep in my stairwell. And how did oh. this occur? Like. <laughs> You Listen, you guys, I didn't start dating him Did when he was move? homeless. This Question. pussy make tent pussy! Yeah. This is that tent pussy. tent pussy! I have put so many men on the street with this pussy. I don't know what it is. <laughs> shit makes you lose all your shit. I can't work anymore. I can't do nothing. That pussy's out. God, I gotta live in a tent. I don't know what happened. Did he move? In? This is for real. Did he move it's to the like... stairs after you guys started fucking or yes, before? Yes, no, after. So he moved to your stairwell after just to be near it? Do you? I don't know. I used to go wake Probably up. Probably stalking you or something. I don't think so. He was my neighbor. He was my neighbor. He lived across the street with his mom and his family first. Okay. And that was a great deal because he would bring me like arroz con leche. Like yeah. he has fresh food from his mom. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yes. It was a good trade off at first. It was. It was. But then stairway dick isn't stairway. as good as. Well, I don't know. It was pretty dick. good. No, Still pretty good dick, dick, I gotta say. <laughs> and then he got mad that I was with another dude, so he wouldn't kiss me anymore like a hooker, like pretty woman. What? Yeah. yeah. He it's wouldn't like, dude, kiss me on the mouth. Today? <laughs> <laughs> Should I hear him? The homeless him? refusing to kiss me. That's how backwards. You heard it here first, man. <laughs> She's <laughs> the only one. The only one in comedy. <laughs> I doubt that. Oh, oh that's yeah. funny. Yeah. Mm. What do we have coming? I could talk to you forever, but we should probably get going. So we should plug some okay. stuff. Wait, unless you have closing thoughts. Any closing thoughts about life? No, we'll have you back for sure. Oh. You, yeah, we could talk to like, you forever. Am I, waiting, am, I, am, I, am I looking at this for you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at, no, I was looking at the time because it's like 7.51-ish. Um, okay. Well, we have tonight. Yes. Um, be fun. The, speaking we'll of see. misspellings, uh, one of these days, those posters hopefully will be spelled correctly. Whiskey okay. with an E. Oh, did I spell something? No, it's oh. not you. It, you don't make. I'm <laughs> notorious for fucking. No, I love. I didn't catch it. You didn't catch that there are players Obviously, that I have a misspelled every tattoo. Time? It's for life. No, there are women in whiskey. But with you no know name. what? In my head, like, cause I have uh, cause you just high functioning anxiety, it. so like I'm constantly like my head's constantly going. Go over. Um, if something like that happens to me, 
Like, that's the reason why I made another video flyer. Oh, because right. I said, down at the bottom, it's Carla V. Think Out Loud. Think it's supposed to be thinks. So that's why I made another one. And I told you to fucking post the one that was correct. I did and you post didn't the correct know you one. did. You posted the other one. No, I looked at the things. I made sure they were, because I almost... Oh, did, I take the scenes. It, did I take it down and repost? Because I know I reposted no, one that was wrong. it was in the group wrong. with the whiskey one. You posted no, the wrong one. Look it up now. No. BTS. BTS. Ow, ow. Everybody look it up now and know that I was right. Because I double-checked it because I was almost about to do the other one, and I re-downloaded the new one for that. And I'll literally, if it's got like two, 300 views, I'll literally take it down to fix something fix and then it. put it back up. Oh, man. I know I'm going to... I was talking shit out of whiskey. Tubs. I don't know. So um, shout out to Make You Famous New Mexico. Oh, yeah. Uh, Make You Famous New Mexico. They have, you know... Uh, rappers, singers, dance artists, whatever they're just trying to. Oh yeah! Thanks for the support. I saw yeah. your. I saw you retweet our tweet t- my story. There. No, that's them, not him. Yeah. No, I'm pointing at them. Oh, them. I thought you were pointing at Larry again. <laughs> Thank you, make you. <laughs> I've done a lot of drugs. Oh, Stop it. it. <laughs> yeah, but I'm looking in that one too. I know, but I'm looking in that one too. I'm all right, guys. All my attention. Yes, make it famous. Thanks for the shout out for the show tonight. Thank you guys. Look at Amuse Me TV. I recognize, but really, look, like, get wood. Get wood. Get wood. Watch Get Wood every Tuesday at noon. Yeah, it's good. Thank you. Yeah. yeah have no, a good I'm time. Just plugging your stuff. So I have ahead. a good time. I just I'll talk. Uh, I just tell stories from my week. And I usually do a review. For some reason now, people love when I review shit that I watch. So now I just shove it in. I'm like, all right, this whole last episode was almost all about Woodstock 99, the documentary. A good one, because now I know if I I do want to watch it. Because sometimes I'm like, do I want to watch this or not? I want to watch it too, only because, like, I remember it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? My Mm -hmm. cousins, like, went to that, but... Your review gave me, like, I was like, I need to watch this now. Like, I have a lot of people say, hilarious, talk but... about rape. Oh, yes, yeah, I do. I talk, about rape, talk about rape at that show. At that Shit. show, yeah. Oh, yeah. A Girl's Gone Wild. Oh, yeah. And that was the culture oh, yeah. then. It was you know? a girl's gone wild. Mm-hmm. It was a strange culture. Remember the Maxim and yeah. all that shit? The they talk about days. that. <laughs> the 50 uh, hottest women. You were and, talking about, and yeah, what's interesting is all of a sudden they just started to rate us. Like it wasn't, I mean, there was always like, oh, she's hot or she's right. sexy, mm-hmm. Farrah Fawcett, not Kate Smith, right? Like people were like, oh, ugh. they had their thing. But it was never like so blatant. I mean, we had some horrible shit in the 80s. Like I remember that, what was the Iranian guy and they had a bullet... They they had like a target on its head and uh, Khomeini, oh, Khomeini. Mm, yeah, Khomeini and you could like do darts at his thing and they had no fat well, chick stickers guy, but... and like, I mean, there was horrible, horrible shit, but, but we, sp- I mean, I don't know. I feel like we talked more. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe we didn't. There was date rape and revenge no. of the nerds. So we didn't talk. We don't know. We don't <laughs> I know. Backtracking on nerds. everything I say. I was like, it's we were talking thing. about, um, the Olympics and, uh, Oh, the, dear. The, the, the Simone. Simone Blood. Yeah. yeah. Yes. She, I want to talk about that. She um, was molested by the, gy- by by the gym guy. Yeah. I didn't realize that. And yeah. I also didn't take Nasser. into consideration Nasser. social media nowadays. Because mm-hmm. I was like, I was telling Buck, I was like, man, fuck that bitch. Like, she needs to suck it up and all this other shit. And then he, like, said, well, you know, she's, we don't have social media like we used to. And I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot about all that. <laughs> Yeah, and also we didn't know wild. that almost all of the women on the or children on the gymnastics yeah, team getting were getting raped, and then having to go and be like, "Ta da!" Like, oh my god! Wild. And we're frightened of gang members. Like, it's... my gang member friends are the most respectful. And they would beat the calm. fuck. They out would of fucking any rape. kill a rapist. They oh, would yeah. kill a pedophile. They would, and that was the reason that L.A. to go back to the L.A. thing and it getting so bad with homeless and all this stuff. Years uh, about five years ago, just when I was moving back, they had a thing LAPD put into place where it was if you're a four. Now your cousins are gonna hate this. Mm-hmm. There are four. Four more Hispanic men walking together it meant they were in a gang automatically. Yeah, I do remember that. Automatically. automatically. Yes. And they would lock them in fucking mm-hmm. jail. And, and they could that, keep them for 30 days mm-hmm. without saying shit. And what that did was it helped clear them all out of the real estate where they wanted to build and gentrify. Yeah. So wow. now, that so growing up in scary. 80s and 90s in, in L.A., I knew the, the homeless were in downtown. That was it. Downtown and maybe Venice Beach a little bit. But the gang members were so adamant about keeping their neighborhood clean and tidy and fucking no, we don't. You well, no, don't fucking protecting their neighbors. Yeah, and, shit. and always being like, nah, dude, take it fucking away. Yeah. So even the neighborhood that I just moved from in Hollywood, it was all 18th Street and Clanton, and there was all these gangs that were around. 
And so there was no homeless between, mm -hmm. there was like a square mile where these guys and girls all lived. And I happened to live right smack in the middle of all of them. And I knew, I was like, I used to come here with my friend. She was a crackhead and it was crack and 18th street. Now it's meth and 18th street. So wow. it's, um, but it still remained the same where they don't, it's not, they don't take that for their, their it's like a respect thing for their neighborhood. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. But there's no more there's gangs. No more heroin, fentanyl. It's all yeah. It's all that. fentanyl and meth and, it's and it's getting people really, heroin really, the good old days, not yeah. fentanyl. It's like, no, yeah, that people is dying, dying. It's not the things that they tell us it is. It's always more insidious than it is, just like with these athletes and things. It's just oh, like the, our culture is so weird. All the scariest stuff is very, we, like, ooh. Well, insidious. we think we call things scary that aren't. And then we call things great that are yes, horrifying. Exactly. Well, you know, living in, living, <laughs> well, living in California, like as a little kid, I grew up in Corona. Mm -hmm. And then as a, you know, middle school, high school, I was in Riverside. But like I was never afraid to walk through my neighborhood. Like those guys weren't gonna hurt me. Right. Like, mm -hmm. Exactly. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even here people are like, You live downtown, you live near Badalas. I'm like, These are my people. I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. Like I feel more comfortable here than anywhere else. And even in the war zone, I mean I went out there, ignorance is bliss and everything, but I had had all this food from my new neighbors that they gave me and I couldn't eat all this food and I wasn't gonna throw it away. So I just bag it up in little baggies and walk all up and down around Central and over by the Walgreens mm -hmm. and there were so many homeless. I was like, yeah. Oh, this is cool, I can give these people some food. And people were real gracious and everything, but this one chick, she's a young chick. I go, hey, hey, girl. And she goes, what? And I was like, <laughs> oh, no. Seeing if you're hungry. Just <laughs> she's checking all, on you. Oh, yeah, I am. I am. Yeah. Thanks a lot. I was like, oh, fuck. You got to be strong when you're on the street. <laughs> yeah. You got to be strong when you're on the street. This is a fucking woman. You know? And I was like, to okay, cool. You have to learn how to act in the city. You yeah. Can't, yeah. You know, you can't be. You can't act scared you either. Can't. Well, well I'm not because scared. You, you can't act scared because then you're a target. Yeah, exactly. Even like, like fake is bad here. I feel like fake is bad. Yeah. Like a, a fakey, like, oh, hi. Oh, my God. This is great. Like, everyone be like, yeah. I'll fucking kill this bitch on the way out. Like, like we're <laughs> nice here, but we're yeah. real, I feel. That's what I, and it's that's like, what I keep encountering. Like, yeah. even on the bus rides that I would take and stuff like that, like, I had a couple dudes hit me up with, like, you know, like a bedroll, like a native dude, like, oh, you're very beautiful. You know, and I'm like, oh, thank you. And he, do you have a dollar? <laughs> I'm like. I'm on the bus, bro. And he's like, very good. Very yeah, good. Same position. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, and so, and he's like, so here. yeah, very good. And I'm like, yeah, very good. We're here. Very good. <laughs> Fucking compliments, bus rides. We're all good. This is blessings. Are you kidding me? I don't have a dollar, but we're good. You know, like, oh Lord. So great. So I just keep it, keep it real. Keep it real. <laughs> We're going to go keep it real soon. Do you have any other days to um, plug or anything or any of the projects or things you want to? <laughs> Girl, I live jaded, say. Yeah, no, I don't so. know. I'm trying to book some stuff over in Denver right now. I don't know, I've never been there to the exotic whites. <laughs> I've not been up that way either. Fun. Where at? Mm -hmm. I was just in Arizona. She was just there doing shows there. <sighs> I like the shows. I didn't like the place. Yeah, I don't. You I feel like, it instantly as soon as you cross that border. I'm like, it's red. It's <laughs> red. There's white people with guns that want to hurt me. Out. I like Tucson. <laughs> Tucson's chill. Um, Flagstaff is cool, but mostly Phoenix and surrounding areas is like a little it sucks. But um, yeah. So living a day we have tonight. Go to Hollow Spirits. We'll be doing these like monthly shows. Uh, once a month or twice a month. I if you haven't been to Hollow Spirits, I mean, it's, it's far as an show, all women guys. show, it's good. It I, is. I was I was there like what a month ago. Yeah, something like yeah, yeah, a month, month and a half ago. Whenever the last. I was one shocked was. when I walked in. I was like, "Fuck, there's a lot of fucking people here." There were a big lot room, of big room, good energy. Yeah. Um, so we'll Amy Marie does a great yes. fucking job. She yeah. fills out these. Yes, yeah, shout out to. She's got a New York energy, man. Mm -hmm. She's got that. Totally. She brought it back. Oh, yeah. She totally does. She's killer. <laughs> She's like you two it. in the way. I was like, are we wasting time here talking about one thing when she should be on the next thing? Anyway, yeah, I would love her. Um, but Amy Castillo, check her out. Part time bro. Um, she'll be putting on shows. I have a show Saturday at Black Cat Cultural Society, I believe. Anyway, it's Barry's birthday. Well, if you go to Carla Vasquez. Yeah, just go to Carla Vasquez Comedy. I went then and then. Doing that more, I know. I be oh, I've been doing that on show uh, shows and open mics to be so proud. I'm just like CarlaVasquezComedy.com. So yeah, Carla Vasquez Comedy. I have another show Monday too at Sidewinders. Just check it out. It's all there. Come back next week. Carla V thinks out loud. I'm gonna talk to Larry about some possible guests. One of them might be Miss. Yeah, Miss Albuquerque okay, cool. might be a different crowd and get a non-comedian in here and see how she feels. Just get no Miss Albuquerque, who's about to be going up for Miss New Mexico on I think the 14th of next month. So I kind of want to get her in before 
that oh, the pageant and stuff. She's been real big support of like the comedy scene. She's been coming out to all the shows and yeah, she was out to a couple shows. Yeah, she's really sweet, Felicia. Um, so give some support to her as well. But yeah, come back next week and we will see you soon, Carla Vasquez. Well, this is well, oh wait, um, uh, Jess Wood. What is yes. your um? Uh, oh yeah, you have a, you uh, a website. Uh, get Jess Wood. Get Jess Wood. That's what it was. Yeah, thanks. Get Wood. Get Jess Wood. Get Jess Wood. Wood. I don't know how much Check I Check out our podcast on Instagram. It's fucking it's fun. It's so fun. Thanks. It's so fun. Yeah, Tuesday's Noon Mountain Time. Yes, I love or it. Is it. Yeah, it's Noon yeah. Mountain. Noon Mountain Time. It is good Probably stuff. should change it after oh, the yeah. pandemic, people getting back to work. <laughs> like, for all of us who are still working from home, at noon, take a little break. We'll be with your friend Jess. <laughs> for all of us comedians like me who wakes up at noon, it's yeah. perfect for my coffee. Um, <laughs> perfect. That's perfect. Uh, thank you so much for coming. We'll thank have to you. have you back. Thank you. Um, Jess Wood? Yes, definitely. You have so many more stories I want to pull out of you. Oh. So I <laughs> appreciate you sharing everything and being so open all the yeah. time. I'm Carla V. This is Carla V. Thinks Out Loud. Larry, Patricia, thank you. Thank you all for watching. See you next week, 6 p.m. live. Larry and Carla. <laughs> Patricia. Excuse me. Patricia. Oh, my ears were sweating. Yeah. Sorry, that went for you.